Okay, yeah, I know that, yeah. So can we go, yeah. Uh, where it is, uh, where it will be. Yes, yeah. Sri Kumaran is present presenting. It, it says Sri Kumaran, Sri Kumaran Mithil is presenting. So after that, I, uh, I have to say. Uh, OK. Yeah, can I share the slides now? Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, I got it. No, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Sure. I will. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, my presentation is yeah, in my stand. Hello. Yes. I can. You want me to? Okay, good. I will do that right now. Oh, yes, no problem. I will send it right away. Okay, reply. Okay, insert. Catch file. Okay. It's on its way.
Hi sir, hello. Yes. Good morning sir. Good morning. Sir, can you please uh, keep your mic mute sir? For a while. My, what do you want to do with my mic? Uh, you should you should keep your mic mute sir. You should mute it yourself. Near? Sir, under at the bottom you have three options sir. On mic and button and one video button. Three buttons at the middle of the bottom sir. See, here is the problem. I can see it on my PowerPoint. I can see that. Sir, uh, at, at the bottom you have, uh, yes, sir. Once go down. Uh, no, yes. Not that, sir. Go bottom of the, no, sir. Close the present, uh, minimize the presentation, sir. All right, there. If you keep your cursor bottom, sir, it will come, uh, it will open a window. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, I see it now. Uh, first, what do you want me to do? Options in that, sir. First, keep the mute button. Uh, click click the mute button, sir. First, for it. From the bottom. Oh. No, no, not that one, sir. Not that one. Sir, uh, once, pre once stop, once. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I have, um, as you can see, that turn on captions and then you are presenting. Yes, sir. You having on a stop sharing hide on the middle of the bottom, sir. Okay. So what what would you like me to do? In the middle, sir, on the bottom. Right here. Uh, press hide button, sir. Hide, hide button. <laughs> okay, where is the hide button? Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. okay, okay. So now yes. the cursor again, same as it is, sir. Okay. All right. Some bottom. It will come again, highlight the options. Okay, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, no, no, sir. No, sir. Before, before what you did. There. Yeah, yeah. First, you have three options in the middle, no, sir. Yes, I do. Yes, now you now you're having three options in the middle. In the middle, sir. Yes. So first, you are, yes, sir. That one only. First press. Sir. Turn off. Yes, sir. That is your mute of mute option, sir. So that we can't hear any disturbance. If you press again, you can you can convey our message, sir. Good morning, everyone. Professor Rajendra Prasad, good morning. Uh, 
గంగారావు గారు గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ గిరిజా శంకర్ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ సార్
good morning and warm welcome to one and all honorable vice chancellor respected dignitaries speakers of the day my dear colleagues students participants and all form of fraternity across globe attending this virtual event it is my pleasure to welcome you all for this webinar being conducted in honor of professor kolapalli venkata ramnamurthi garu for the service he has rendered during his tenure as a faculty member of andhra university college of pharmaceutical sciences it's an honor to have illustrious and eminent professors like professor v subbarao garu professor k samamurthi garu and many others who had served the pharmaceutical technology department it's a privilege to have professor k v ramnamurthi garu who has continued the legacy by carrying forward the blazing torch of relentless quest for knowledge and perfection with his dedication to teaching and research now i invite our professor y rajendra prasad garu to give opening remarks thank you as president of this international webinar i extend a warm welcome to our honorable chancellor professor prasad reddy registrar professor ganga eminent professor kumaran reddy from Kansas, Professor Chandra Prasad, Professor Chandra Prasad, from Edinburgh State University, Professor Nandita Jain, from Bangalore, Sri Sagar, and an eminent industrial person, Dr. Meka Lingam, Vice President, Lee Pharma Limited, Shakhapatnam. my senior colleague professor k v ramanamurthy principal organizing secretary dr sailaja my faculty colleagues large number of students participating in this webinar we organize this international webinar on the eve of superannuation of professor k v ramanamurthy garu who would be attending superannuation tomorrow it is usual and quite customary in andhra university to have this type of webinars webinars on the occasion of superannuation and keeping this in view and the good research work carried out by kv ramanamurthy garu in the field of modified gums in the drug delivery systems we are organizing this international webinar in which four eminent persons are participating i may bring to the notice of our honorable vice chancellor that one of our proud alumnus sri kumaran melithil would be speaking on drug delivery and intellectual properties and with your good initiative sir we recently came to know that ipr center is established in andhra university and this will become the first such seminar of this center he would be speaking on drug delivery and intellectual property how to patent your research this is a good beginning we are making here and the other eminent speaker is from california health sciences university he would be speaking on maltose microneedles for transdermal drug delivery systems and another indian eminent speaker is professor sanjay k jain he would be speaking on natural and synthetic polymers where ramanamurthy has carried out lot of work and then we mixed the academicians with industry and to how that we heard dr meka lingam uh, vice president lee pharma limited at wisa he would be speaking on current progress on natural polymers and their future trend in pharma i think the deliberations of this seminar would go a long way in providing a clean and a clear understanding on the ongoing research activities beyond what we are doing at our andhra university with these few initial remarks i would not like to take much of your time it is 
Now I request our Honorable Vice Chancellor to give his valuable message while inaugurating this international webinar. Thank you, sir. Honorable Vice Chancellor. So good morning, uh, one and all. Is my voice audible? Your voice is clear and audible, sir. Good morning. Okay, okay, right, right. So very good morning, uh, one and all, and uh, let me extend a very warm welcome to uh, all the delegates to this uh, international uh, webinar. And uh, it gives me immense pleasure to be present in the midst of all of you okay, during the inaugural activity of this uh, international webinar. Uh, it's been organized in connection with the uh, superannuation function of uh, my very good friend, Professor uh, K.V. Ramanamurthy. I do not wish okay, you to retire from the university. You must continue your active service, okay, in fact, to the university. And uh, let me also congratulate uh, the organizing committee members, uh, uh, president uh, of this committee, uh, the incumbent uh, principal, Professor uh, Rajinder Prasad. And Dr. P. Sailaja, the organizing secretary of this uh, international webinar. And uh, the other members, Girija Shankar, Ishar Kumar, uh, Krishna Manjari Power, and uh, Girija Shastri, Murli Krishna Kumar. And I also see Veera, Veera Raghavalu, Santosh Arun Kumar, and uh, Sanjay Samant. These are all, in fact, you know, the members uh, who are there behind. Uh, organizing this international webinar on a topic of utmost importance and the topic uh, is current and future perspectives of natural pharmaceutical XCPNs and their applications in drug delivery systems and uh, while uh, congratulating the department once again on taking okay a topic of uh, utmost uh, importance uh, I would say that uh, the very word, you know, that is present in the theme, uh, natural, natural, right? Very, very important because, you know, we are uh, moving away from, okay, this particular word, you know, uh, in the process of development and, you know, evolution. We are, in fact, you know, making use of more uh, synthetic kind of, uh, you know, products. And, okay, we, we keep talking about carbon footprint everywhere and, Pharmacy industry is no exception. You know, always, you know, we are so used to this in synthetic kind of products. And it is time, especially Corona also taught us, okay, a great lesson that, you know, not to go away from uh, the so-called, you know, uh, the natural products and to be in touch with nature. Because uh, I, I, I recall, you know, the uh, word of a very, very famous painter by name, Claudie Monet. You know, he says that the richness I achieve uh, always comes nothing but the source of okay. right so to be okay in touch with the nature is always important perform maybe i think okay whether you are in a park or maybe you are you know, on the top of a hill or uh, maybe okay you are okay uh, at the river bay you know, you know when you once you breathe that particular fresh air or once you enjoy that okay the greenness of the trees always you know it gives a soothness kind of a feeling to your body and mind you know these are the days, you know, I have seen over the last six months, you know, several people, okay, they are coming out of their home morning 6.30 and, you know, spending about half an hour time outside, okay, exposing themselves to the sun. And they say that, you know, they would get, you know, this uh, so-called vitamin D, which improves uh, their well-being. So, oh, we have, in fact, recognized, you know, the uh, importance of nature and natural products. And now I understand that you are organizing an international webinar on such an important topic. And it is the time that, you know, pharmaceutical industry should also uh, probably, I think, uh, do conduct more a number of experiments on making use of natural products. And in this connection, I would like to uh, probably, I think, tell, okay, all the delegates, uh, very shortly, Andhra University is coming out with uh, a scientific park. And uh, under the scientific park, uh, in fact, we are going to establish uh, three exclusive laboratories. Okay, there is one laboratory okay where only just the pharma pharmaceutical related testing okay would happen and in fact we have tied up okay with several local pharma industries and big pharma industries and we have got you know mous with them 
and with the help of them we are going to have okay a, a testing laboratory established in the campus of andhra university and similarly we are going to have another laboratory called food testing laboratory which is also coming up in the campus and apart from that we are also establishing a genetic laboratory like uh, professor rajendra prasad made a mention uh, we have received a letter from government of india just a week back to establish an ipr chair and also okay to recruit an ipr professor right. so andhra university in fact has been doing great work with reference to okay this uh, kind of you know research and uh, i would okay really uh, congratulate uh, the pharmacy department for taking up this kind of an initiative and many of okay the uh, patents uh, that are there with andhra university most of them you know were originated only from the pharmacy department that way you know i have got great affection towards the pharmacy department because they are not only doing great work from the department because of them the andhra university is also getting very good ranks so i hope and believe that in future also you would continue this trend and make use of the services and expertise of the senior people who are probably retiring from the department i have in fact you know requested the principal uh, the current principal ramana murthy gar as well as the incumbent principal rajendra prasad to make use of the services of the retired you know senior teachers also please invite them okay back to the department make use of their services in the department engage them in the research activities and if they are interested also assign a subject because that way only maybe i think okay it is possible to pass on the legacy of the senior teachers and the research pattern and pattern okay to the so called youngsters in the department i have seen you know promising youngsters are there in the department i know the silagya krishna manjari power ishwar kumar girija shankar they are all you know promising okay youngsters and i in fact you know would expect okay all these you know youngsters to learn from their seniors and you know whatever legacy that is okay being left by the very senior professors okay should be continued by these youngsters and uh, i'm sure uh, that uh, the participants would surely get benefit okay from the international seminar and i understand that uh, very very prominent persons i see okay listed here with me professor sri kumaran he is uh, going to address okay on a topic today and professor chandrashekar kholli in fact he is also going to be one of the key one of the speakers in this international webinar i see professor sanjay k jain and dr meka lingam okay some prominent people okay from uh, uh, outside okay are going to deliver okay the, their speeches today and i expect that all the delegates okay would get uh, uh, the real benefit and uh, uh, from this international seminar i wish you all the best and thank you so much for uh, uh, giving okay invitation even to me to to be present in the midst of all of you thank you ramana murthy garu once again thank you sir and uh, thank you rajendra sir yeah. yeah thank you thank you thank you sir thank you thank you vice chancellor sir for your appreciation appreciation for pharmacy department and uh, we really thank you for sparing your valuable time in spite of the busy schedule to be with us this morning we look thank forward you. to your support in future also sir thank you very much good morning sir prasad reddy garu i am a new six how are you sir how are you fine sir fine fine to see you now i request now i request professor ramana murthy sir to give a keynote address on the topic professor prasad reddy garu honorable vice chancellor of andhra university dr rajendra prasad president of today's webinar dr sailaja secretary of the organizing committee dr giriya shankar dr giriya shastri dr murli krishna kumar dr pawar dr raghavulu dr sanjay samant dr santosh arun kumar and my goods my senior sri kumaran melathil dr chandrashekar and all other delegates and participants a very good morning to all of you first of all i would like to thank my mfarm guide 
and PhD guide, Professor Chaudhary Garu, for making me like this in the field of science of pharmacy. With his encouragement, contribution, I could reach to this level today, what I'm looking before you. The interest on the natural gums was generated in my mind with my great legendary teacher of Andhra University College of Pharmaceutical Sciences, the then Department of Pharmacy, who is the founder faculty, Professor V. Subbarava Garu. He started a research work on a gum called Gum Karaya, procuring it from Girijan Cooperative Corporation. But for some reasons beyond, the work was not progressed well. And when I wanted to establish my own school of research, I thought of starting my research career with this natural gum, which was not at all explored for any pharmaceutical application. So the first research scholars who worked with me also encouraged me to take this challenge. And we have taken this work on gum karaya, followed by different other natural gums like hupu gum, badam gum, lania gum, etc., etc. The reason for taking up this challenge of research in natural gums is because when the excipients are the most important constituents of a dosage farm, most of the research work is concentrated towards the semi-synthetic and synthetic excipients. But many of the researchers have ignored these natural products. But over a period of time, different side effects, contraindications, etc., are reported due to excessive concentrations of these excipients that are used in the formulations. And again, the scientific world started looking back towards the applications of these natural gums. And in this course, many of the natural gums, like gaur gum, xanthan gum, etc., are successfully tested as very good suitable pharmaceutical excipients in the design of novel drug delivery systems like the control drug delivery, gastric flow drug delivery, even vesicular systems like liposomes, microsomes, etc., etc. So we also tried to contribute from our site. And I'm proud to say we generated about three patents by using these natural gums for the design of controlled drug delivery systems using different model drugs belonging to different classes like antihypertensives, antidiabetics, and other classes. So nowadays, again, the industry is trying to use by validating these natural gums for their characteristics, by preventing the source of variation, the contamination microbial, and the seasonal effects on the collection and preservation of these natural gums. And they are trying to establish good practices for making them as most useful excipients, whereby the product cost can be reduced to a great extent, benefiting the human beings. Simultaneously, the Use of natural gums in the pharmaceutical industry will boost the economy of the government also because we have a lot of hills surrounded by uh, surrounded to Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, and Tamil Nadu, like Eastern Ghats and Western Ghats, which are the best sources for these natural gums. They also improve the quality of life of the tribals who are well engaged in the collection of these natural gums and keeping all these ideas. We have done a lot of research related to various gums, and I successfully completed very good research publications also with good impact factor. And all this credit, it is not my alone, but it is because of my great research scholars who worked with me and now who, who occupied a coveted positions in different industries and academia. And the support that I received from my faculty, who are my teachers also once, right from the beginning of my career till the day the, the faculty gave a lot of support. Whenever I have some specific doubt in other specializations like pharmaceutical analysis or pharmaceutical bi biotechnology or pharmaceutical chemistry, they are first to help me without any hesitation. And with their contribution also, I could reach to these peaks. And I thanks one and all. But last but not the least, I thank all my faculty members for giving this a very great send off or farewell from the college in spite of the COVID-19 situation where social gatherings are completely prevented because of the fear of COVID infection. 
but still they are taking all the precautions and they are making this function to the great extent as we used to do for all the teachers without any COVID situation or anything and for which I am very much indebted to all the faculty members of this college and students. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Now I request Professor Gangarao Garu, Registrar Adikavi Nanaya University, Rajamandri, to speak a few remarks related to our webinar. Sir. Now I'm going to see our beloved professor KPR Chaudhary master also. Sir, uh, give you a message on this webinar and a few remarks related to this. Very briefly, sir. Sir, okay. sir, call Ah, sir, we run mute chain, sir. Why is that? Speaker, speaker. Ah, okay. Okay, I think. Is it Sailaja okay now? Is it audible, Sailaja? Hello? Ah, no, yes. sir. Okay, ah, you are audible. Is it audible? Okay, okay. Thank you. You are audible. Oh, you are audible. Ah, okay, okay. Ah, good morning, all. Hello? Is it audible? Ah, good morning, all. So, I am very happy to participate in the webinar that we are now organizing in honor of Professor K. V. Ramanamurthy, who is attaining the age of superannuation and, be, and will be leaving the university service from tomorrow onwards. And Ramanamurthy is known to me very well. And uh, from 80 to 2010, when I retired from the university, till then, almost 35 years we were together 
in the campus not only in the department wherever we go in the campus together only we used to move and uh, ramana murthy is my student i can proudly say that he is my best student at m farm and also the phd my first phd scholar under me successfully completed his phd work and uh, later on i have guided several students but now i record that ramana murthy is my first and the best phd scholar among all the 100 phd so far i have completed it's really a credit and he joined the department in the m farm in the b farm also he did in andhra university but in the b farm classes uh, there will be not much connection between the teacher and the student and only in the m farm when he joined in et in m farm course so we were uh, later on we used to work in the same laboratory pharmaceutics laboratory and we used to sit also in the same room it is called the machine room alumni of andhra university know very well that uh, what is that machine room so we used to sit together in the machine room only for several several years and then of course with the expansion of the building old building as well as the new building we will move to different rooms but till then we used to sit together only and uh, i feel very proud about ravana murthy because he has excelled not only in teaching but in research and other extra curricular activities and uh, so he has uh, he has become almost he has become the number one teacher come researcher in the area of pharmaceutics in the country and won several awards at national level for his uh, uh, significant uh, research work as well as for his other contributions in teaching and andhra university is always uh, on the top in several accreditations and rankings and ramana murthy made a significant contribution in all these rankings his research work is a very high order and in fact uh, my publications are not that of high order those days but uh, later on when he when ramana murthy started independently in his lab the research work particularly on the uh, natural polymers as excipients this is one of the important area that he initiated and i think the first time in the country that pharmaceutics professors have shown uh, such interest in the natural products and in, and their application in pharmaceutics particularly for various formulations like control release and novel drug delivery systems so he made a, he made a very significant work and ex, he has to his credit and I, i feel very proud to say now that ramana murthy is my own student from and who together we together worked for nearly 30 35 years in andhra university and uh, now it is uh, so he looks like the same during the last 35 what 35 years i am observing him he is with the same physique only when he is in m farm phd work he used to look like that only now also he used to look like that only it is not believable now that he attained the age of 62 and retiring today he is just like a, a junior staff member when he joined as a staff member in 85 so we have several coincidences ramana murthy joined as faculty member lecturer in andhra university in 85 and on the same day i was promoted as full time professor of pharmacy in andhra university later on we together moved for several examinations several inspections together we did he is very serious he is very serious dedicated teacher and almost all the students not only the Uh, students of andhra university college of pharmacy but he used to go as exam excellent exam for several other colleges affiliated to andhra university and other universities Where, wherever he goes hello ramamurthy ah uh, ah uh, brief brief okay now wherever he goes the student he used to impress the students very well and uh, and uh, all the students because of his uh, uh, work and dedication they used to respect him only and then now uh, so he will be retiring from andhra university service but 
his expertise services will always be available to andhra university students and faculty not only to andhra university i wish that his services will be useful to several other colleges in india and uh, on this occasion first i wish the international webinar a grand success and uh, also i wish him uh, a peaceful return life and thank you all for giving me this opportunity now i request professor gijya shastra mana to give a brief introduction about our first speaker shri kumaran melthil garu oh, good morning everybody sir good morning sri kumaran melethil sir are you there on online yes oh, for them it is sir good evening for you sir i am dr giran professor girija shastri from pharmaceutical sciences i am here by reading the bio data of one of the speaker in the morning sri kumaran melethil from us uh, i am very much privileged to introduce our eminent speaker mr sri kumaran melethil professor and uh, he did his i am very much proud to say that he did his b pharm and m pharm from andhra university he is an alumni of andhra university and he got his gold medal at b pharm level Uh, under the name nageshwar rao pantulu gold medal in bachelor of pharmacy 1967 later on he did his m pharm in pharmaceutical sciences and then he went to us did his phd in department of pharmaceutics state university of new york buffalo new buffalo and later on he has done his doctor of jurisprudence jd in university of missouri kansas city school of law and he had held many positions in editorial board like clinical research and regulatory affairs emeritus professor at university of missouri kansas city and a president of law and science consulting and he had a legal practice focusing on patent prosecutions and infringement opinions and also medical devices and he is expected in many areas of pharmacokinetics like adme studies drug delivery clinical pharmacology drug analysis he has many publications uh, at both national and international levels to his credit and many of the patents he has published on regulation of dietary supplements world anti doping agents for prohibited substances biosimilar and hatch waxman litigations he served as a consultant to the pharmaceutical industry as well as the federal agencies he is a fellow of american association of pharmaceutical scientists in 2010 and an american college of clinical pharmacology in 1988 and this is about the brief introduction about professor sri kumaran melethi and i request sri kumaran melethi to give his speech thank you very much for giving me this opportunity thank you all श्रीकुमरन प्लीज श्रीकुमरन सर यू अनम्यूट एंड स्टार्ट योर प्रेजेंटेशन सर अ वेरी गुड इवनिंग टू यू ऑल राइट एनीवे एज आई गॉट यू नो I was going to say uh, good morning. Uh, it's uh, it's eleven thirty p.m. here. Uh, distinguished guests, students, and uh, ladies and uh, gentlemen. Uh, 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 can you hear me? Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, I greetings from America. 
I wish to thank uh, Professor Shalaja for uh, for this invitation, and uh, it's a great pleasure to to visit uh, my alma mater, though uh, it's a virtual visit. Uh, but I think I'll enjoy it. And I also want to take this opportunity to congratulate uh, Professor uh, Jastri uh, for his uh, brilliant career and for uh, and wish him a happy retirement. I uh, respectful uh, for him. When I retired, I went into patent law. So maybe <laughs> Professor Shastri can think of something like that once he retires, that is tomorrow, right? So anyway, uh, let me see if I can get started here. I, hopefully uh, the, the internet guards will be on my fa in my favor. I, I don't know. There, okay. Um, maybe yes, ma'am. Now it's yes. visible. Is it? It is visible. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. So you are also attending. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. So okay. It, it is it is already time. Yes, ma'am. You can start. I think. Yes, madam. Sh yes, shall I start? Madam, I want to introduce you. My only. Okay, me. okay, okay, okay. A very good morning to all of you. I welcome you all for the second day webinar on trends in biotechnology. First lecture will be delivered by Professor Rindu Benerji, Madam, Department of Chemical Engineering, IIT Kharagpur. She will deliver lecture on novel abatement strategies of environmental pollution through biotechnological intervention. A very good morning, Madam. I welcome you to the webinar. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, so uh, here, uh, those of whoever is joining this uh, particular uh, webinar, are they all uh, from the faculty or they are students also? Some are faculty, madam. Some are students also, madam. Okay. Okay. Then a very good morning to all of you. Namaskar. And today uh, I will be talking on the pollution. Madam, yes. I want to say a short bio data, madam. Few minutes on the madam. Okay. One, okay. okay. Uh, it's a great privilege for me to introduce Professor Intu Banerjee, Madam. Professor Intu Banerjee, Head Agricultural and Food Engineering Department and Center for Rural Development and Innovative Sustainable Technology, ex MNRE Chair for a Professor, is acknowledged as one of the leading entomologists working in the area of food, fermentation, and bioenergy. She has completed her PhD from Biotechnology Unit, Chemical Engineering, IIT Karakpur. She was bestowed with prestigious Rafi Ahmed Kidawai Award, Punjabro Deshmukh Outstanding Women Scientist Award, Louise Pasteur Recognition Award, Best Teacher, Women Bioscientist, and Fellow of different esteemed societies and academy. Her significant contributions comprises of cost effective industrial enzymes production using agro residues with immense applications in food and biofuel industries. Professor Banerjee has established a novel 2G ethanol technology with a biorefinery concept which harmonizing circular economy. Though her innovative research, she has been granted with three international and eight national patents of which 10 technologies have been transferred to different industries and agricultural stakeholders. Professor Banerjee guided 34 PhDs, published 199 articles, 49 book chapters, authored and edited a book entitled Environmental Biotechnology, Oxford University Press, and omics based approaches in plant biotechnology with its premier publishers. Now, I welcome Professor Bintu Banerjee, Madam, to deliver the lecture. Thank you, Madam. Thank you. Thank you very much for your uh, nice introduction. And, uh, you know, when a teacher is uh, talking something, and if 
uh, she, he or she finds that some of uh, uh, their very good students are also attending the similar webinar or lecture. So they feel extremely happy. The similar thing is there with me. Today morning when I saw one of my students is attending this particular webinar, you cannot uh, imagine uh, that, uh, yes, uh, how much uh, is my happiness to see my student after a long time. Because when they were here, they were a budding scientist and they have flourished now. And I feel happy to see them and I, my best wishes are always there with them, that wherever they will be, they will be flourishing like that. So with this uh, brief introduction, let me start my today's lecture. So I, I think you must have uh, uh, understood that he is uh, about whom I'm talking. It is uh, Gallapati Vijay Kumar. So he was uh, the student of mine and uh, he is now full-fledged faculty of some of the institutions here and he is attending this uh, particular course webinar so my, my I, i'm just uh, so he has made my day today so i'm really very happy uh, gvk so that is why i by looking at him when i saw that uh, his face is there so i was so happy i started asking gvk are you there are you there so still it is uh, me and my students uh, who are working together and uh, I, I feel uh, proud to introduce him, him among you, you people. So with this uh, brief uh, background, so let me uh, start my, my today's lecture for which I'm here. I would like to extend my thanks to uh, Dr. Chandana for giving me this opportunity to address you and my my sincere thanks to Anna sir uh, who had uh, I had a long association with him and I my best regards to him for rem remembering me and uh, for recommending my name for this uh, particular webinar so with this uh, brief introduction i i would like to uh, start my today's lecture on environmental pollution and when uh, it is the pollution and it is the environment is polluted what are the different biotechnological intervention that one can go for abatement of that particular uh, pollutants so this is the uh, this is all about today's my uh, gist so let us first start with the pollution what is pollution how we can identify the pollutants so pollution is the introduction of contaminant that means we the most developed species in this world we decide that what is our requirement, what we need and what we don't need. So accordingly, we decide our uh, that uh, which is detrimental for the environment, for the society, and it is equally detrimental for us. So that those things, how we are identifying that causes instability disorder and it is having some harmful effect or discomfort to the particular system that is the ecosystem so pollution can take the form of chemical substance or it may be in the form of other uh, sources like noise like heat like light and so on so suppose if somebody is shouting to top of the voice many a time we don't like that and we are telling oh my goodness this is a noise pollution sometimes heat and light is also causing pollution to the environment so if we categorize the type of pollution then we find that noise is there one in one hand 
air is there in other head and then the rest of the things can be categorized as water pollution soil pollution and these are all link with land and water so it is having a direct impact on our daily life activities and along with that the human intervention which are there are creating some pollute pollution which are extremely toxic for the human being and we talk about the radioactive pollution pollutants or radioactive pollution so coming to this air pollution now when we are uh, uh, talking about the air pollution that means we cannot see this type of pollutants i will be coming to the example specific example later on in some of my other slides just uh, i have shown you that yes you see here some industry they are releasing some fumes and that is coming and getting dissolved to the environment and it takes some time when the environment is totally clean the dissemination of this particular fumes takes few second to few minutes to get it dissolved to the environment but with the gradual accumulation of this type of fumes or dirt or dust or particulate matter in this environment environment is also start feeling heavy and that is creating all sorts of problem now when uh, i'm just showing you see here the environment in winter you see you cannot see the sky that entire thing is so drowsy and you see no clear picture can be seen and sometime it is creating a fatal accident and it has got a detrimental impact on the health hazard and the living being so this air pollution they are there are different causal agent for this air pollution and when we are just categorizing them what we find that automobiles and domestic fuels are the major are contributing majorly on this air pollution followed by fire high proportion of undesirable gases which are getting emitted from different industries different product process development which may be some of these are the carbon monoxide carbon uh, sulfur dioxide nox that uh, this uh, co2 emission to this atmosphere greenhouse gases and so on i think many of you are knowing very uh, very much so that is uh, the reason recently i think uh, recent past i think in delhi you have seen that the new concept of odd even vehicle has been introduced why it is so because the, the what, what is the different attempt to reduce the emission from the vehicle that is the only uh, uh, objective and that may be the reason that to reduce the number of vehicle the odd even uh, this concept has come into the picture if you see here in 1980s you see so beautiful pictures are there and if you see 2019 you see that the level of that clear sky is a how drowsy here and it is not only the drowsy and we cannot see the environment properly we cannot see the clear green there's my last name melatho with this now this work is copyrighted um, so for a lot of practical purposes, if you want to pat, this is a practical thing from this course, you, from this lecture you can take. So if you write something, a book, you can put your name, uh, put C and the date, the year, and then, uh, and yes, you can go and get it registered. That's a little more technical. I won't go there, but this is the first step in getting copywriting your project. Then there's trademark. Uh, like Nike, for example, you know, that squiggle sign that is protected 
and nobody else can use it till the trademark ends. Now, trade secrets. Now, some some of the older people like me realize that 20 some years ago, uh, the Indian government wanted Coca-Cola to release their trade secret. Uh, and of course, for Coca-Cola, trade secret is their business. So they just packed up and left. Of course, India was a very small market for them, but trade secret is their big thing. So there are many ways you can protect your intellectual property. Okay, so and and for farm for the pharmaceutical uh, people, for people like us, the patents are mo are mostly patents, and so this is about inventions and money. Okay, so because there's no use getting a patent if you cannot make money out of it. It's all commercializing your research. Now, as I said earlier, you need to get money because you can use that money to do more research. So that's the that's the argument. Okay. So this is basic idea. So and so when you start doing your research, good science is expected. Of course, we, as I said, we know that. However, you may also want to ask. Can I patent my work? Is there an invention involved? And if so, how do I get it? So that is the starting point of getting a patent. And in the United States now, as I said, a lot of universities, a lot of professors, um, they want to um, start their own small companies and they try to get patents and get money and then come up with products. So, so that's a big picture, but this is a very important slide. It's all about inventions and money. Um, otherwise, there's no, because it costs money to get a patent, as most of you know. So, uh, so what is a patent? A patent is a property right granted by a government to an inventor. That's what it is. So, I mean, I've looked at some patent, uh, Patent law, I haven't read the whole thing, but there are books on patent law you can find in on Indian patent law, and but that's given by the Indian government. Okay, so, so if a patent is a property right granted by a, go a government to an inventor. Now, in the United States, uh, this right is provided in the United States Constitution. I, I don't know whether it's part of the Indian Constitution, because the Indian Constitution borrowed from both American and British um, uh, constitutions. So maybe there's something in Indian patent law. Maybe you can all look it up. But that's basically what a patent is, a property right. Now, before we get into all these words that might, at this, at the first look may sound strange and intimidating, think of property right as you own, you own a car. If you own a car, you can sell it to somebody. You can give it away to somebody. You can do anything you want with it. You can rent it, uh, apply it as a taxi. You can do all kinds of things. So all these words mean that. Uh, so ex And basically, if you have a car, you can exclude me from using it. Of course, I can use it with your permission, but I cannot do it without your permission. So the property right is to exclude others from making, using, offering for sale, or selling the invention. So if you come up with an excipient, uh, then if a pharmaceutical company wants to use that excipient, well, they cannot. If you have a patent, they have to come and license it from you, and that's where you make your money. You say, okay, give me so many rupees or so many dollars, and then I will license my excipient for you uh, for so many years and we'll renegotiate it after whatever uh, time. So, so that's an important thing to keep in mind. Those are the property rights. Um, and also, if you have a patent on a excipient, for argument's sake, then nobody in India can import that from from the United States. Okay, so that's the other, you cannot Im import that. And, but the most important thing is this is for a limited time. Okay, so 
uh, I'll come to the, um, the amount of time in a minute. And what do you get in return? Or what do you have to give up in return? You have to disclose your research. Now, I gave you an example where you would write the synthetic uh, steps for a uh, chemical, or you may come up with a procedure for extracting a gum uh, from a tree, and you're going to a very extensive uh, steps. You will have to disclose that in your patent application. Uh, so some people think that maybe patents are maybe not the way to go, and sometimes trade secret is the better way to go. So those are all more complicated areas that I cannot discuss at this point. But remember those four ways of protecting intellectual property. So basically, that's what it is. So if you want to speak uh, um, in legal terms, the in utility utility means usefulness and you know for example the gum or a drug for malaria they're all utility patents so your utility pat utility us patent is a limited time monopoly granted by the government um in the 2016 the laws changed so it's 20 years from a filing of a patent application so you have 20 years so if you file your application today and then three years later, that's a, roughly the time you'll take for it to go through the patent office. You get your patent, then you'll have what is called 17 years of uh, patent life. Okay. Now, so, so there are many types of patents. Uh, and I said utility patents, that is usefulness, uh, is most important for RX scientists or pharmaceutical scientists, then there are plant uh, patents. You can also get design patents, like the the emblem on your car, whatever that's like the Mercedes, it's got a little thing on the front, uh, on the hood, things like that. But our focus is utility patents. Okay? So now you've got a rough idea of what you know patents are all about. So I think maybe it's time for us to get into what exactly all this means. Uh, again, as I said, the language uh, of patent law can be somewhat confusing, especially to the novice. Uh, for example, a machine. Suppose you make a machine to make an excipient or take the bark and extract a machine to extract, extract the ingredients from it, the gum, if you will. That is a utility patent because it's used to make this uh, gum. Or you could, man it's all, and it's also called a manufacturer. This is where the confusion begins because an oil eating bacteria, which is, is called a manufacturer. Um, of course, why it is a manufacturer is, and this is a very famous case, I may refer to it later on in my talk, um, where the oil eating, they genetically modified a bacteria so that it would eat oil and it could be used in oil spill. And then there's composition of matter. I mentioned a chemical that you synthesize in your laboratory to treat malaria. Composition of matter is another type of utility patent. And then a process or a method, a formulation. So you want a drug delivery device which releases the drug at a particular rate a zero order rate, which is what most people try for using different uh, polymers, well, then it would be a formulation pattern that you want to look at. So these are all examples, and it really doesn't matter where you if it fits. The most important thing is, is there a utility or a use for, a, for the patent? Now, uh, this is the famous case uh, where the Supreme Court of the United States in 1980 said, anything under the sun that is made by man is patentable. Now, as you delve into this in greater detail, you are going to see all kinds of nuances. But at this stage, just remember that if you synthesize something in the laboratory, you can patent it, you can take a bacteria, you can modify it, um, and then technically you're eligible to get a patent. Okay? So that's um 
an important thing to keep in mind. So when you say you're a first year research scholar and you and your advisor meet or uh, and then you sit down and talk and what I'm encouraging all of you to do is ask that question. All right, good science, yes, you want to publish it in international journals and is it original, all that good stuff. But at the same time, you should ask also in my uh, point, please to ask, can I also get an invention out of this? Can I get a patent out of this? Because inventions and patents are basically the same thing. So what are some of the requirements? As I said, it has to be allowed by statute. And maybe this is true for India too. Um, I cannot make a nuclear bomb in my Nope, except for the military, I cannot make a bomb. So that's a law, by statute meaning law. And then it has to be useful. I mentioned utility, okay? So that's useful. So the third thing is novel. I mean, novel is a very low bar, as they say. If it is, it's novel, it's just new in relation to prior art. I'll come to prior art. That's an important concept. Uh, say, for example, uh, you look into the catalog of um, Toyota cars uh, worldwide, United States, uh, Australia, India, and you find they don't have a particular color of car available. So you'll say, oh, okay, if I paint with that color that is not available, would that be novel? The short answer is yes, it will be new because it, you just painted it. But that is the low step. But this, the fourth one is the 800 pound gorilla, as they say, because that is where life becomes very difficult, which is called uh, obviousness. But before that, what is prior art? Now, remember, there are some parallels. I want to draw some parallels between research in the laboratory and patent, patents. So before you do research, you do a literature search. You do a little search, search and ask, well, has this kind of gum uh, done before? Has anybody published on that? Or has anybody synthesized a chemical like this? You go into research and find out. So prior art is the same concept. What is known which is pertinent to the invention at the time of invention? So if you're doing, if you're, if you're a new student, you're starting today, then you'll say, okay, what is the available literature available today. Now, so if you invent something today, uh, say you've been working on it for three, four years, and something that happens later will not apply to your uh, patent because it's done after you invented something. You, I think you can see the logic why. Because when you publish a paper, well, it's original because nobody else has published it. Five years later, somebody could publish something more but that doesn't preclude your work, doesn't affect your work. Now, now this is a very tricky part. Uh, every week, I there are cases. I'll give you an example, and most of you may have heard the name uh, Dr. Reddy's Laboratory. Now, Dr. Reddy's Laboratory is a very big generic pharmaceutical company, and so they would try to market uh, generics and they would say, well, our work, our generic product is um, doesn't, uh, is, you know, the work that others have done is obvious and therefore the patent is not valid and so on. So non-obviousness is very important. But then you should ask what exactly to whom, non-obvious to whom? That, and, and again, this is a very tricky concept, uh, but personal of ordinary skill in the art. What exactly is that? In practical terms, if you're a pharmaceutical scientist, it could be somebody with a master's degree. It could be somebody with a PhD degree in pharmaceutical sciences. Um, in the biotechnology world, for example, it is well established that they want somebody, the person with ordinary skill in the art should have a PhD that is has evolved so this so what what they're saying is that you don't need to be a genius you don't need, you, you 
do not need to be an Einstein uh, to come up with an invention. The person of ordinary skill in the art. So you get an idea now of what it, what the qualifications are for this person. Uh, that doesn't usually come up, but sometimes when there is fights, uh, legal fights between generic company and brand name company, the issue of well, in, in whose eyes is this non-obvious? And again, as I said, these are some words that have legal meaning. We, you know, we have used in our in our everyday writing. Uh, we'll say, "Oh, that is obvious." Well, that is from the English English dictionary perspective, but there's a patent equivalent which is legal. So, as you learn more patent law, you need to pay attention to some of these uh, English words which have legal meaning in, in the patent world. So. So you you say you, you want to get a patent, and so what do you do? You 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 get a patent lawyer or somebody else qualified who has done this before. Uh, I heard uh, the talk uh, earlier that uh, I think it was the vice chancellor or somebody said that uh, Department of Pharm Pharmaceutical Sciences at AU has gotten three patents. So maybe that person can. Uh, write a in write a patent application if it's in the same area so so what's the key parts of a patent application well first you give a title and i'll come to that um, as you as we discuss uh this you'll see in greater detail okay now what's the background the background is the if you will the literature behind this invention and then there's summary which is of course a summary is a summary. And then drawings. Now, for example, if you are uh, working with a um, chem chemical, then you will give the structure. You, so in your patent application, you will put the structure in the same way you would put it in a publication. You would put a structure in it. Uh, and then there is the detailed description. So you describe your invention and you'll see it in a minute what that means. And then the claims, um, the claims is uh, what are your inventions? Now you and you'll see this. So keep in mind that from a scientist's perspective, the detailed description and claims are the most important things. Now, wh what is this CFR? Uh, I, I should have taken it out, but since it's there, I'll say it. Uh, CFR stands for Code of Federal Regulations. The code of the, that code tells me what the requirements are. So if I look at CFR, so if you can Google it and see 35 CFR 1.77 will list these things in in that. I, I apologize, so I'm going a little fast because I want to finish it on time and give you some idea. And you have the slide, so hopefully you can look at it. I hear some background noise. Uh, hopefully everything is going well. You know, blinded here, I have no idea what's going on. So please, somebody if it's not clear. Is everything okay? Hello? Oh, I can't hear you. There is too much, too much uh, static, too much static. Okay. No problem, sir. Okay. Is everything going okay? Okay. So, Okay, so the major sections of the patent application, as I said, are the specification and claims. Okay. So this is where in the specification, it's like your research uh, methods section of your paper, where you put all the methods and how you did this. So I did that experiment, I did this experiment, and this is what I found, the whole details. And if you read a patent, you'll see the specification section. And some of you may be familiar with it, uh, if not, that's what specification is all about. And then the claims. And I, again, when I come to the example, finally, you'll see all this, it'll start working, okay? So, uh, so as I said, the details of your invention and experimental details, okay? So, um, and then claims. Now, each claim is an invention, and you'll see what I mean. So a patent can have 
many inventions. Uh, there may be slight modifications of a key invention. And you'll see it as I take a little time. Uh, and this way you can take a breather, breathe a little, and try to put everything I said in perspective. So here it is a pattern. And so let's take some time to really study this. And now that I've given you some background uh, in patent terminology, you'll begin to understand. Um, and hopefully, I hope this, uh, this uh, uh, talk is being recorded so you can uh, go back and listen to it as many times as you want. So this is a method for treating pain by administering 24-hour oral opioid formulations. Now you can go to Google Patents and search and you'll find this and you can read it. And so, so what's, in, so, so that's the title, there's a title. And then uh, when you first apply, there's no patent number, but once it's issued and it's issued 9, 1997, nine, uh, in those days, it was 17 years after the issue. So this patent ended uh, 97 plus 17, 2014. Uh, and here are the inventors. Uh, and then, so these, these are scientists uh, who invented this, but they worked for Purdue Pharma. Uh, now with the opioid crisis and all that Purdue Pharma, there's been a lot of problems with that. But anyway, that's not the issue. Then, so, so they assign it. Now, as I said, the assigning is like you, you car, you say, okay, uh, okay, Sri, here's my car, take it. All right, so, and there's some employment matters, but it is, the important thing is you can assign because uh, when you work for a company, your intellectual property, this is the main point I was trying to come to. When you work for a pharmaceutical company or any company for that matter, your intellectual property as an employee belongs to your employer, okay? And if, you have, if those of you with industrial experience may realize Maybe when you took up your job, the HR department asked you to sign certain papers. Next time, read all those papers before you sign because um, you know most probably you won't get the job if you don't sign those papers. But the point is that it is in the United States anyway, uh, as a university professor, everything or anything that I invented belonged to the university. And the university would file for a patent. And, but my name would be on the patent. Uh, so the inventors have to be on the patent. Uh, okay. Now, this is a totally terrible slide because there's so much in this, but let me take the time to explain this. So what is this? What is this claim? I told you these are all inventions. It's a method. So first you say, oh, okay, it's a method. A method for what? For treating pain. And obviously, it, it not obviously, but there are, it could be treat, you could be treating pain in animals uh, because in America, veterinary medicine is big, maybe in India too, maybe to some extent, in humans uh, comprising. So it com consists, comprise, as I said, legally, it's a totally different meaning for orally administering to a human on a once, -to -day, daily, once a day basis. So you can see how your science is now getting incorporated into the patent. And then containing an opioid analgesic or the salt thereof. So for, for example, you could take an opioid analgesic and come up with a derivative which has better properties. And is that patentable? Yes, it is. Okay, so, so you don't have to come up with an original uh, analgesic, but you can make modifications. Uh, which upon administration provides a time to maximum plasma concentration, that is Tmax, and that was my field of inquiry when I was a professor with pharmacokinetics, of said opioid about two to about 10 hours. So what they're saying is, my invention is this, I have an you know, it's an oral sustained release dosage form that can, use, can be used to treat pain, but when I give this to somebody, their Tmax will be observed between two and 10 hours. And a maximum plasma concentration, which is Tmax, which is more than twice the plasma concentration at about 24 hours. 
So this is where you as the scientist with all your polymers and excipients will work on. So remember I said that if you have a patent, uh, you know, I cannot do the same thing. So if somebody else works with an opiate analgesic and if their Tmax falls between two and 10 hours, they cannot get a patent because you are the first one to already have done that. Yeah, so you see the idea. And we'll talk of infringement in a minute. So, and, but, so that's it, w which is more, which is more than, so you, the, the C-max is twice the trough level or C-min for those of you who have taken pharmacokinetics after the dosage form and, and then effective pain, tra pain treatment for about 24 hours or more after administration to the patient. So this is an invention and it's also a claim. Okay, so this is the product uh, that you have made and you have been issued a patent. And you can, so say somebody has looked at this and you have seen this patent, then you can say, well, maybe I can change it here. Maybe I can change it there. Maybe I can come up with a unique polymer to change things. Uh, but some of these things are protected. This is how you protect your intellectual property. This is your intellectual property. I cannot make something similar. I can make something where the constant Tmax is happens at one hour or happens after 10 hours. Just give you an example, because it's not covered by the, the your limits. So I can be outside the limits and I can get a patent. So that is, so this is an invention. This is a dosage form invention. And for those of you who are working with uh, um, and, you know, adhesives, the same arguments of, oh, I, well, you know, suppose you say that I have this uh, excipient that gives much better dissolution properties for your tablet. Uh, and if that is uh, pretty uh, non-obvious, that means um, nobody may, may not have thought of it. Well, then you have a good chance of getting a patent. So this gives you an idea of what an invention is. Now, I want to show you how you can get other inventions that are derived from this invention, okay? So let me go to the next claim. Okay, now, if you see the method of claim one, that means everything what I said in claim one is true, but now the Tmax occurs about two to eight hours. It was two to 10 hours, before in the first claim, and, and then now you're between two and eight hours. And now you narrowed it further. The method of claim one, same as you, where in Tmax occurs in about six to eight hours. So you see how you're narrowing the range after oral administration of the said dosage form. So now you have three inventions. Now, why is it done this way? The reason is that if somebody else could claim and say, well, you know, I have a patent, uh, so if I can go back, I have a patent that does between two and 10, and the patent examiner, like a reviewer of your paper will say, you know, sorry, you can't get this because somebody has already done this. But then you're protected between this and that. So that is how they write these separate inventions as part of the claim. So I think you get the idea of how to make changes uh, to protect your intellectual property. So it's like when you uh, submit a paper, your reviewer, a knowledgeable reviewer would say, wait a minute, that has already been done. So maybe you need to do more work some, in some part of your work, which is uh, not been published. So maybe you need to more work and then that could become a paper. So if you, what I'm trying to emphasize to all of you is, don't think of patent law as some strange thing that you, you know, it's all legal, you know, as I said, legalese, but, but there's a lot of co common things. And maybe it's true in India too, but in the United States, to become a patent attorney, you need a minimum of a bachelor of science degree. Uh, you know, uh, it could be engineering, could be pharmaceutical sciences, it could be biology, it could be a whole, but you need a science background. If you have a degree in law, uh, you cannot 
become a patent attorney because unless you also have a science background. Uh, so that's very important. Uh, and maybe I don't know what the patent laws are in India, but uh, for, the, for those of you, like when I applied to become a patent attorney, I submitted all my courses that I took at Andhra University. Fortunately, uh, I still had all the, uh, the, the syllabus. So the, the moral is don't throw away your syllabus because I was looking at my syllabus 30 years after I graduated uh, from Andhra University and I had all the details. So I showed it I, when I applied to show that I uh, had enough signs. I presented uh, the Andhra University uh, cyclo styled uh, um, uh, uh, syllabus. Of course, in my days, there was, we didn't have Xerox. Maybe now you do. <laughs> so anyway, so that, that is the whole idea of claims. Um, and you get an idea. Now, now, in, in, I'll go back. I'll go back and, you know, before I totally lose you. So, so I want, if, so now, this is what is called a broad claim, because what I'm saying is containing an opioid analgesic. So I didn't define the opioid analgesic. So if this patent is, applies to any opioid analgesic, because I didn't identify that. So again, I'm anticipating, you know what? May, maybe Purdue Pharma or somebody else uh, has, not Purdue Pharma because that's there, somebody else may have uh, some other opioid analgesic, so they will knock this out. They'll say, no, no, you can't have this because somebody else has an, uh, a patent on opioid analgesic. This is a very broad claim as it's called because it includes all opioid analgesic. So to protect yourself, you'll say, okay, this is, I'm only claiming morphine sulfate. So at, at the end of the day, we know that morphine sulfate is the most widely used uh, opioid analgesic. Uh, you know, maybe there are others, but at least this is an old patent, at least at that time. So this is the whole idea of writing claims and how you incorporate all this into your research. Uh, because without good science, there can't be patents, because a good science is critical to getting a, a patent. Or you can get a patent, but at least a commercially viable patent. For a commercially viable patent, you need to have good research. Uh, now, now, let me give you some more pharmaceutical um, stuff, okay? Now, I, I talked about this in the 10-minute video on YouTube I presented, but let me very quickly go. Rilosec was a $6 billion drug for Astra. So, unfortunately, uh, or I shouldn't say unfortunately, but the reality, omprazole is acid labor. So it would be destroyed in the presence of acid. Uh, so, um, so somebody, a company called Cutco, wanted to put out a generic. So again, the, all, the, all those issues come up. Is, you know, is this the same as what already you have? You, if, it is, if the product matches Trilosec patent, uh, then you can't get a generic because it's a patent. So you, you cannot, you can't copy a patent until the patent expires. So, um, so they, so Cutco, they submitted an ANDA, which is a generic drug application that actually stands for abbreviated new drug application uh, for generic omprazole. Uh, and forget all the other stuff. And then the Astra holder said. You know, you're infringing on my patent. And now I can talk of infringement. Think of infringement as, again, I bring up the house analogy. You have a fence around your house. I cannot just walk into your house without your permission. And legally, walking into your house without your permission is the legal equivalent of infringement. Yes, it's called trespass, but infringement in the legal, in the patent world is similar to trespass, like coming into somebody's house without permission. That is 
so you get an idea what infringement is. So, so I mean, if, if somebody has a patent and I make something very similar and try to sell it, well, then I'm infringing on that particular patent. So now, so I, I, this is again a big slide, but you can see this is their patent. This is Astra's patent. Um, it had a core, uh, and and this is where you you all perhaps know this as pharmaceutical scientists. What do you do when you have an acid labile compound? Well, you put a buffer, an alkaline product, so that it the it's not destroyed. You use alkaline protection, um, an alkalizing agent. So what they had was a core region comprising a material, and they show all those various alkal alkalinization agents. Um, and they did that. There was a core. And then, uh, so, so it went to court and, you know, $6 billion are involved, 4 billion US sales and 6 billion worldwide. So, so at the end of the day, um, this was a question that the court had to answer. Did the Cutco formulation contain an alkaline reacting compound, which is basically a buffer? But this is, again, as I said, uh, this is the way patent lawyers speak. Uh, it's a buffer. And by the way, in the uh, YouTube presentation that I referred to you on the first slide, I've discussed this in greater detail. So, and also I wrote a paper on some of these issues. So, uh, as I published in the uh, AAPS journal. So that might be, that might also be helpful to you if you want to read them. Uh, so, so now we, as pharmaceutical scientists, you know, we, we are formulation people also, among other things. Uh, so. Um, so uh, so the cut commercial has three parts, a code, a subcode, and an entry code. Uh, the code concluded that that basically those two products were the same, that the Astra product was almost identical. I'll say why I'm almost in a minute, almost identical because they had the other three parts, a core, a subcode, and an entry code. But here was the thing that this small company developed uh, a product without using the alkalization agent uh, or ARC in its core. So they said, okay, this is not the same it, because they had a, to put buffers to protect the drug, but they didn't. And this company, which is hardly anything, overnight after the after the case was decided became a multi-billion dollar company because they now could market omprazole or pilosec generic pilosec so you can see how formulation plays so if you are in the formulation business and you're working for a pharmaceutical company one thing you want to ask uh uh the ceo or your boss or whoever else is hey how about our patent? Is our, are we protected? Can somebody design around this? So this is where I said maybe the knowing some patent law, and the more you know, the better, can help you uh, open up new career opportunities for you. So that so this is one example of that. And th this is too involved, but, so I won't. You know, I think my I don't know how much time I have. I um, think I just got a few minutes and I, maybe I'll take a few questions. Um, basically, this is it. Uh, and I will I'll, I'll, I'll forget all this uh, and I'll come to here. There was a product, uh, was a was a contraceptive agent, Yasmin. So whenever, uh, at least in the United States and I'm sure in India too, uh, if a, a brand name company uh, sees a threat of a generic, they will try to block the generic from entering the market. So, and then they will say there is uh, a patent that we own this because, you know, Bayer says, you know, we have the drug and Barr 
is infringing on us because our product and their product are the same. And so uh, what do we do now? So anyway, so that patent was issued in 2004, okay, in 2004. Uh, pay attention to the dates in 2004. Now that the case I showed you two slides ago was happened in 2007. So this is again a Supreme Court case that came in 2007. And they changed uh, certain things relating to uh, obviousness. And for example, if you as a person of ordinary skill in the art, as I said, could be a master's degree, a PhD degree, you say, you know what? I am going to try different things and let's see if it will work. And if uh, you try a few things and one of them works, you cannot say, well, uh, now I have solved the problem and therefore I should get a patent uh, because this is new law. So in 2007, uh, I, I realized this is a little tech, this is obviousness and all that is very tricky, but this is going to take some time for you to really understand. But as you read and think, I think you'll begin to understand some of the complexities of patent law. Um, actually, this case came out of an automobile patent, but it, it goes from across uh, um, disciplines. So, so basically, again, come back to pharmaceutical sciences. This drug, uh, drospirinone, is not very soluble in water. And all of you know, that when a drug is not soluble in water, you would micronize the particle. So, so in the Bayer's patent, because uh, it was not very soluble, they micronized it. Okay, and 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 then again, if you're a, you know the person of the ordinary skill in the art, um, you would try these things. But the obviousness applies to somebody like with the person with the master's or PhD who tries different things to solve a problem, uh, but that's obvious because it's there. And so, so this uh, patent, because of the new laws, uh, poorly, poorly water soluble, hence micronized. So, so, so they said, the court said, similar to these, another drug, which is also micronized. So if one drug can be micronized, and you just say, okay, I'm going to micronize my drug. Well, then you'll say, well, what is new here? There's nothing new because you're just adapting something from one situation to the other, and that is doesn't meet the obviousness standard. So you get an idea of that. Now, so, so this is the 531, which is the Bayer patent is invalid. Bar wins, and therefore you can market its generic. So, so when you work for a pharmaceutical company or you want to mark, develop something in your own academic research laboratory, uh, you need to be asking all these questions if you're interested in invention. And to be very honest, if you want an invent, if you don't want an invention, you're all you're interested in good science, absolutely no problem. You don't need to know a single word about patent. You don't. Uh, however, uh, the, the assumption is, uh, uh, that if you get a patent, you might have industries come by and maybe license it or help you with your research and provide you with money. And the vice chancellor mentioned something about a research park coming up at the AU, and I'm so delighted. I'm so delighted to hear that things are moving in that front. Um, and an IPR. And so all that is capitalizing on your intellectual property. So, so what are some concluding remarks I want to make? Uh, so, pharmaceutical scientists with a good understanding of patent law should be able to better design their research for commercial gain without compromising quality. And so, commercial gain is the key thing. If there's one, if there is one thought I want you to take away from this presentation is, I am working on commercial gain. Do I want commercial gain, yes or no? And the answer is no, no patents. You can just forget this whole lecture. You won't be heard at all. Then 
Also, you can communicate more effectively with patent attorneys uh, during the patent prosecution in the process of getting a patent. And then uh, the American job market, uh, like I, in India too, I'm sure, uh, any you know skill sets having a second skill set skill set my tongue tied uh, second skill set is, is definitely useful and I have tried uh, talked to several uh, friends of mine in different universities about having a, a part like you know in, in the in the United States we have MD PhDs or you have regulatory along with MBA and stuff like that. Then why not have a, a pharmaceutical sciences graduate program, a master's or PhD program with a minor in patent law? Uh, unfortunately, I've not been successful yet, uh, but I keep trying. And so that's it. And these are my friends who helped me with my, these are my helpers, uh, my cats and my dog. So uh, I will, I don't know whether uh, I have time, uh, Professor Shalaja. Do I have any time for questions, uh, or if, you, if there's no time, uh, please uh, email them through her, and I will try to answer the questions as best as I can. And thank you again. And uh, it is—I've never given this kind of presentation where I have no idea uh, what the audience is thinking, or maybe you're all asleep. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, I hope not. So anyway, thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, it's it's uh, it's uh, twelve thirty. I may stay on for a little longer, uh, uh, and we'll listen to at least one other talk before I call it, uh, call it a night. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now I invite Mrs. K. Ravya. Our postdoctoral fellow uh, from pharmaceutical technology department to present thanks note for our first speaker, Sri Kumaran Malthilgar. Shravi, over to you. Good morning. On behalf morning. of AU College of Pharmaceutical Sciences, I'm Dr. Shravya Kudumala, thanking Shravya. Professor Sri Kumaran Malthil, sir, for his enthralling presentation on the topic. Drug Delivery and Intellectual Property. We thank you, sir, for sparing your valuable time to deliver this contemporary lecture on the eve of the superannuation function of our beloved principal and senior professor, Ramamurthy, sir. Thank you, sir. You have enlightened us on various topics of utmost importance like the significance of intellectual property, parts of a patent document, the various claims, and the process to obtain a patent, patent prosecution, and if we have interest, how to safeguard our academic research. Thank you, sir, for this pertinent topic as per the present scenario. Your lucid explanation on the topic has greatly benefited most of the researchers as well as students. Sir, you have piqued our interest in going for a patent to safeguard our intellectual property as well as our research interest. Thank you, organizers, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Swami. Now, my request. One minute. Salija, one minute. Thank you, Sri Kumaran, for your uh, patience, sacrificing your midnight sleep, and. Mm -hmm. uh, enlightening our delegates as well as the faculty of AU College. It is my special thanks to you for obliging our request and coming forward to deliver a great lecture related to patent law, which is the most important thing, which is the most important thing for our students as well as faculty. Thank you very much. Thank you for your affection towards Andhra University for accepting our invitation. Thank you, sir. Now I request Dr. K. Ishan Kumar Introduce the next speaker, Professor Chandrasekhar Kohli. Sir, over to you. So, good morning. Good morning, one and all. 
రెస్పెక్టెడ్ రమణమూర్తి గారు రాజేంద్ర ప్రసాద్ గారు అండ్ అదర్ ఫ్యాకల్టీ మెంబర్స్ సార్ గుడ్ ఈవినింగ్ డాక్టర్ చంద్రశేఖర్ కోహ్లీ సార్ ఆర్ యూ దే డాక్టర్ చంద్రశేఖర్ కోహ్లీ ఐఎమ్ ప్లీజ్ అండ్ హానర్ టు ఇంట్రడ్యూస్ అవర్ ఎలక్వెంట్ అండ్ ఎక్నాలజబుల్ స్పీకర్ డాక్టర్ చంద్రశేఖర్ కొల్లి పిహెచ్డి జేడి టు స్పీక్ అబౌట్ మాల్టోస్ మైక్రో నీడిల్స్ ఫర్ ట్రాన్స్డర్మల్ డెలివరీ ఆఫ్ డ్రగ్స్ డాక్టర్ కొల్లి వర్క్ యాజ్ ఎ లెక్చరర్ అండ్ సబ్సిక్వెంట్లీ యాజ్ ఎ ప్రొఫెసర్ ఎట్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ ఫార్మాసూటికల్ అండ్ బయోమెడికల్ సైన్సెస్ కాలేజ్ ఆఫ్ ఫార్మసీ కాలిఫోర్నియా హెల్త్ యూనివర్సిటీ క్లోవిస్ యుఎస్ఏ డాక్టర్ కొల్లి వాజ్ హానర్డ్ యాజ్ ద టీచర్ ఆఫ్ ద ఇయర్ at california health sciences university for a successive last 4 years so that is 2016 17 18 and 19 he has published well informed articles in numerous journals and also chapters on characterization methods for oral mucosal drug delivery studies he proclaimed review articles on micro needles bench to bedside therapeutic delivery in 2015 and his contributions in book of toxicology volume 1 the past present and future ba- future of basic clinical and forensic medicine he gave a conferred presentations at uh, national and international conferences he is a uh, skilled and expert as a gen- journal and a grant reviewer in publications he held positions in the uh, editorial board of journal of pharmaceutical education and research in 2011 to 2000 15 he received the university gold medal at kakatiya university india in 1997 so with this uh, few remarks so i i thank the organizers i request uh, dr kohli to continue your lecture sir thank you so much uh, for the uh, nice introduction actually it seems thank someone uh, is accessing this one it seems it doesn't allow me to share Okay. It's Sarah Santosh. Yeah, this is Can you see my slides please? Yes sir, yes sir, it is open. No. Okay. Good evening. Uh, good morning. Good morning everyone. I'd like to thank the organizers and the administration of uh, Andhra University for for giving me this opportunity to speak on the superannuation of uh, Professor Ramnamurthy Garu. I had a small interaction with him, with him uh, maybe a couple of times when he was uh, our external for during our masters. And uh, Yeah, I'd like uh, to wish him all the best and uh, good luck in the rest of the life, throughout the rest of the life. Okay. Uh, having said that, I'd like to present my talk on uh, maltose micronodials for transdermal delivery of drugs. Okay. Now, a brief outline of this one includes uh, introduction with a specific aims, methods followed, a discussion of results and a brief conclusion no transdermal delivery is uh, nothing but delivering the drugs across the skin okay so this is an alternate to oral delivery where 90% of the drugs are delivered orally but others are delivered through alternate routes and transdermal delivery is one such route why skin this is because skin is easily accessible organ in the body like there's a readily accessible organ and it's the largest organ uh, as compared to any other and it has a surface area of uh, approximately about 16 square foot and uh, most importantly has a uh, market potential it has a market potential of more than 25 billion dollars uh, us dollars so briefly i'll introduce the structure of the skin i'm not going to go into the fine uh, details of it but uh, uh, this will help you understand why micro needles okay so
So as you see, the skin is mainly divided into three, the corneum, the superficial layer, which is the superficial layer. Below the corneum or the stratum corneum, we call it as. Before, uh, below the stratum corneum, there is epidermis, epidermal layer. And below the epidermis, there is a fat and subcutaneous dermal layer. So the primarily, uh, our entire body is covered with this very thin layer, which is about 10 to 20 micron in thickness. Uh, we call it as a stratum corneum. This stratum corneum, uh, it's less than a paper, one tenth of a paper thickness, but uh, it has a very important role to play. It prevents the entry of substances from outside into the body. And also, most importantly, it prevents the evaporation of water or regulated evaporation of water is uh, possible because of the stratum corneum. If the stratum corneum is lost in bones, then uh, the patient is going to uh, be having like uh, more access to the in, uh, internal, uh, I mean, below the epidermis and dermis resulting in infections and all. So why transdermal delivery? It has several advantages, uh, like uh, it is painless. It bypasses the hepatic metabolism reduces side effects and has a better patient compliance because swallowing of bitter tablets and all uh, can be avoided. It has a prolonged duration of action. Most of them last for 24 to seven uh, days, 24 hours to seven days, sorry. And termination of uh, therapy is easy. You can just take off the patch and uh, whatever the uh, drug is there in the patch can be discarded simply but there will be some still remaining in the skin that gets delivered. Okay. What are, however, despite several advantages, there are limitations. These limitations uh, include only lipophilic molecules can be delivered because stratum corneum is lipophilic in nature. So it selectively takes lipo uh, lipophilic molecules inside. That means, the stratum corneum dissolves the lipophilic molecules, then they get transported across the skin. And molecular weight in for most of the substances is less than one kilodalton. And only because of uh, its nature, maybe hardly six to ten percent of the drug, maybe six percent, five to six percent is delivered across the skin. Okay. Therefore, you need to have a low dose and or a highly potent drugs. The enhancement, therefore, in order to enhance the permeation across the skin, we use different techniques. We call it, as, I mean, that can be classified as physical techniques and the chemical techniques. Okay. Physical enhancement techniques include use of ultrasound, endophoresis, electroporation, radio frequency ablation, laser ablation, thermal microporation, and microneedles. Uh, Briefly, my talk will be based mostly on the microneedles. So this brief introduction, we can get into the microneedles. What are microneedles? These are micron, tiny micron size structures, uh, up to maybe around 200 to 500, nanom, uh, 500 micrometers in tall, that uh, can be used to pierce the stratum corneum, which is our defense uh, barrier, and deliver the drugs across the skin. So it is a temporary breaching of the skin so as to deliver the drugs across the skin. Okay. But these are tiny enough that it won't reach the nerve endings so the patient won't feel pain. At the same time, it does not reach the capillaries. Uh, so the patient uh, will not get any infections. So that is the main advantage of these microneedles. The design and the size of the microneedles is very important. Okay, the specific aims uh, for my project is one, to characterize solid maltose microneedles. Microneedles are uh, made of several materials, mainly titanium, um, silicon dioxide, and a stainless steel. So these all are uh, uh, not biodegradable. When it comes to maltose, maltose is a substance naturally available and it is biodegradable and biocompatible. So it is uh, uh, added advantage when you use maltose to make the microneedles. 
Okay. The second thing is they assess their ability to increase transdermal delivery in vitro and in vivo. Now, in the methods, how do we create these maltose microneedles? I'll show you that. I'll help of animation. So this is a cross section of a mold. Maltose is maltose is placed and the mold is heated. It melts and the extra maltose is scraped off. It is allowed to cool then slowly. And once cooled, it is taken away using vacuum vacuum section. And this is one micro needle, and uh, you know, such micro needles will be stacked. There will be several other uh, micro needles stacked to make an entire row, a row of micro needles. And how do they work? can use another animation to help this out. So these are the micro needles that pierce the skin and they dissolve. And when it dissolves, it also there is a small tiny pore created in the skin. So that's that uh, tiny pore is going to facilitate the drug absorption across the skin. This is how micro needles work. So this is another a picture that shows two types of needles. We call it as poke and uh, patch. Second is poke and uh, dis it dissolves within the the drug itself. The micro needle itself contains the drug. Maltose contains the drug. So once it is inserted into the skin, the uh, maltose dissolves along releasing the drug. This is another method of uh, delivering drugs using maltose micro needles. So in order to characterize these micro needles, we, uh, we have used this uh, hairless rat skin. That means like we want to see whether these micro needles are able to pierce the stratum corneum. Okay, so hairless rat skin was treated with uh, micro needles and uh, fixed with glotaraldehyde, vacuum dried and coated with uh, gold palladium target. And Sorry. Similar procedure was followed without uh, fixing stuff for micro needles. So basically, we use a scanning electron microscopy to see that uh, how they look like, what is the height and all. Okay. And another is next is uh, we confirmed the study using the dye binding studies. That means uh, the micro channels are uh, created in the skin. And these micro channels selectively take up the drug. So we just want to stay in the skin using the uh, micro needle treated skin using the dye, and you want to visualize it using a video microscope. And then the next thing was to see if uh, how how deep these are going. Means I want the micro needles not to go too deep because once it goes too deep, it is going to touch the nerve endings, and the patient may feel pain. Or once it does the blood vessels, it may cause infection slowly, I mean, bleeding and infections. So I just want to make sure like how deep these are being inserted. So for this purpose, we used fluorescent uh, or uh, confocal microscopy using uh, calcin as a fluorescent agent. So another experiment to assess the perturbation, that is, whether the barrier is really damaged or not. So in the right side of the slide, the, the upper picture, the stratum corneum would permit under normal circumstances only a limited amount of water to escape through the skin. That means only a certain amount of water can be escaped through the skin uh, in normal conditions. However, when it is breached, there is a lot of increase or there is a increase, significant increase in the permission of the water. That means water is going to escape at a higher rate. 
by measuring this water uh, trans epidermal water loss we call them as so by measuring this trans epidermal water loss uh, it can be said that like uh, whether there is a breach of the skin or not Now, other is we want to once we create the pores and check the uh, check their um, feasibility to uh, uh, disturb the skin. We have to characterize the pores. Means all pores must be relatively uniform. We cannot take uh, one big pore and a very, one very small pore. So we have to characterize them from uniformity. And we use a fluoropore uh, software, which is a MATLAB-based uh, uh, software. Uh, custom built uh, and uh, used a fluorescent imaging using uh, uh, calcin again. In vitro delivery was conducted using France diffusion cells, most commonly used. So the membrane is sandwiched, the micron needle membrane is sandwiched between the donor and the receptor chambers. And the donor chamber contains, uh, con consists of finite microliters of 10 milligram per ml licardipine hydrochloride and uh, pH4 citrate buffer. The same but without uh, without uh, drug and 10% of ethanol constituted the receiver chamber. Yeah, the temperature was maintained at 37 degrees centigrade and it is stored at like about 400 RPM. So we followed this with uh, in vivo studies to study the efficacy. So jugular wing cannulated main uh, hairless rats were used. So we have uh, poked the skin using micron reels. Then we place a liquid uh, reservoir patch with uh, nicardipine hydrochloride. Blood samples were collected at uh, frequent intervals based on the kinetics of the drug, and uh, they were separated and analyzed. The control study was conducted uh, without pretreatment with micron deals, but the drug was um, its kind of passive delivery using uh, um, nicotine hydrochloride. This general statements regarding the statistical analysis. And to discuss the results, uh, fabrication. Once we did the fabrication, there were designed to obtain about 27 needles each of finite micrometers tall. And usually we stacked about six of them together. And they were pretty standard with the height because it is made with the micro molding technology. So the difference in height was uh, less than 3%. So these are the scanning electron microscopic images of our micro needles. On the left side, on the top corner, you can see the micron needles against a 26 gauge needle. 26 gauge needle, uh, okay. That uh, uh, as compared to that one, the size of the micron needles is very small. And these are pyramidical. Uh, the uh, top lower picture is uh, below the. You can see it's in a pyramid shaped, half cut pyramid. In fact, the other side of the uh, pyramid is flat. So it is just like a half cut pyramid. And on the right hand side, the top picture shows uh, uh, the thick, uh, this one shows uh, tip radius. Tip, because tip radius should be uh, so small to penetrate easily. At the same time, it should not be too fine so that it is very, uh, it will break off. So, the micronial radius was uh, for our drug was about uh, three microns. Using this micro, using micro needles, we created pores in the skin. This is uh, uh, the bottom picture of uh, stratum corneum that is being pierced. You can see the layer of skin. You can see the stratum corneum uh, making a hole, kind of a triangular shape hole. So. Again, we confirm the uh, rupture or we confirm the uh, destruction of the stratum corneum uh, by imaging, uh, HND staining, not imaging, sorry, H uh, HND staining. So you can see on the right side picture, it can it clearly shows a arrow mark, the stratum corneum, uh, corneum has been breached. Next, okay. 
So, as I said, like uh, normal skin, this is a hairless hard skin. So norm uh, normally, uh, intact skin will not take any stain. So methylene blue, when you treat with methylene blue and wipe off, everything is gone clean. But when there is a microporation, what happens is the methylene blue will enter through the pores inside. And uh, upon uh, clean swabbing with alcohol swabs also, the stains will remain. You can clearly see the dots made by these microneedles. These are the pierce, uh, the, these are the piercings made by the microneedles in the stratum corneum. On the right hand side, you can see a picture like uh, if you carefully observe, you can see in uh, at least two, two to three pictures, you can see the holes. Okay. And uh, the distance between the two of them were two now holes were like uh, 376 microns and uh, the distance between the arrays was about one mm, uh, one, uh, 100, 1,000 microns or one mm. The pore density, when I use this micron rails, it gives a pore density of uh, 250 pores per centimeter square. These are very tiny pores. So per each centimeter square, we can create 150 pores approximately. So, as I said, uh, the pores have been created. You saw the structure of the micron needles, their ability to pierce the stratum corneum. Okay. Now I want to check the depth of this penetration. So I just want to see like how deep they are going, so that it is not hitting the nose uh, and uh, or the blood vessels. The first image is at 20 microns. That is like on the stratum corneum. Because stratum corneum does not take up calcium, you can see low intensity. As we go deeper, once we cross the stratum corneum, at 60 microns, you can clearly see the pores and the calcium spreading around the pores. And then at 80 microns, 100 microns, and 120 microns. At 160 microns, you can see the uh, thing fading away. So at the uh, next level is like it was at 180 microns, we could not see much fluorescence. So, our depth of permeation is limited to approximately 160 microns. So this is, uh, as I said, like uh, trans epidermal water loss. That is, uh, when treated micron deals, when treated with the, uh, when skin treated with the micron deals, they tend to lose water vapor. So you can see here with, uh, this is so the first one is first four bars are with uh, hypodermic needle as a control. Next ones are the uh, ones with uh, micron deals, one, two, three, M1, that is one piercing, two piercings, and three piercings. And the BM and uh, BM and is base of the micron needle. There is nothing. I mean, it's a uh, that is a perfect control. And then last one is a tape strip skin. That is like we remove the entire stratum corneum using tape stripping. So there is no stratum corneum for that. So there is a tremendous increase in the uh, water levels. You can see this from this that like there is an increase in the water loss as compared to the control, which is BMN. And this pattern is similar to it's just like poking with the skin with uh, hypodermic needles. Now, this is the pore uniformity. As I said, like once we create the pores, we want to check for their uniformity and their ability to take up the drugs. So in this pore uniformity studies, what we did is like we, take, we took the skin and uh, we applied a liquid reservoir patch. This is on the live rat, uh, live uh, uh, hairless rat. And uh, after uh, 10 minutes of exposure, we cleaned off the area uh, using alcohol swab and then took a picture. Yeah. Uh, processed um, using, this was processed using uh, fluoropore software, uh, which is integrated with uh, MATLAB. So it gives a permeability index, pore permeability index. You can see pretty much the pore permeability index is uniform. It's kind of bell-shaped curve. That's what we were aiming up. It's uh, pretty narrow, and uh, I think like uh, we got the I mean the results we were expecting. Now, most important thing is 
what if the pores remain after treating? We have to show, I have to show, apart from this, I have to show that like once uh, uh, pores are created, they should close. Otherwise, what is going to happen is just like uh, drugs, there, are, sure, there will be chemicals and everything entering into the, uh, you know, uh, through the breeze skin. So we need to show that these, tend, these pores tend to close. So we measured transepidermal water loss again. After uh, immediately after operation, it was high. Then after five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, thirty minutes, forty minutes. So up to four hours we measured. So the pores remained uh, viable up to four hours. Upon exposure, once you close it, it is going to stay for more than twenty-four hours. But uh, once you open, expose it to the atmosphere, it is going to be gone like in approximately one to four hours. So the same thing we confirmed using the uh, calcium binding studies. We created the micro channels. The first one is intact skin at uh, different timings, zero hours, four hours, and eight hours, and 12 hours, 15 hours. Uh, everything is gone. It become normal. So now having proven that like micro needles uh, have the ability to pierce the skin and they, they can deliver the drugs across the skin. We want to study that uh, uh, in vitro, the same drug using uh, the same concept for, we want to demonstrate using nicardipine hydrochloride. So we used uh, France diffusion cells with a passive uh, mode and with the, just a base of the micro needles and with micro needles. You can see the there is a tremendous, huge increase in the drug delivery using micro needles. This is across the skin. And in in vivo studies, we use such a uh, hairless rats for this in, in vivo studies. And uh, this resulted in like, this is a passive patch which contains nicardipine hydrochloride but no microneedles. And this is the in vivo with the microneedles. You can definitely see, and the difference is in all of them, they, uh, there is a very significant, statist statistically significance, can be seen in uh, all the pharmacokinetic parameters. Okay. So, conclusions. Maybe. Maltose micro needles were characterized okay, and were shown to create the micro channels in the skin. So, so we were successfully able to characterize these micro needles. And in fact, we studied the varying depths. There are a lot of studies that I did not put here because of time constraints. Uh, but uh, we have studied like uh, 100 microns, 250 microns, uh, 370 microns, 550, 750, and up to 1 m. The best results we got using the 500 microns and uh, micro needles. And the, these micro channels were characterized and shown to improve the transdermal delivery of nicardipine hydrochloride, both in vitro and in vivo. So it is not only nicardipine hydrochloride. First, we started with nicardipine hydrochloride, then we went on to study different drugs, selenium hydrochloride and uh, then we wanted to study uh, uh, effect of uh, lipophilicity on the drug delivery. We studied uh, uh, like uh, different uh, lipophilic beta blockers for their ability to cross the skin across micro microporated uh, skin. And also we studied, another thing we want to study is, uh, we, we have studied is how much, like uh, what is the maximum limit it can cross? Uh, that uh, we were successfully able to deliver up to, we were uh, 120 kilodaltons, IgG, which is about 120 kilodaltons. And uh, I mean, also we were able to deliver uh, low molecular weight heparin. Uh, practically, uh, this uh, micro needles eliminates the uh, challenge of this molecular size. So pretty much any size of the molecule, any molecule uh, 
can be delivered using these microneedles. It all the main constant is being only the loading uh, low dose and the high potency. These are the references that we use for our preparation. And uh, I want to acknowledge Dr. K. J. Banga, my postdoc advisor, and their group for their excellent uh, support during my postdoc. Uh, David, Janice, Gautam, and uh, Dr. Raskin, and Yashi Osaka for arranging the micron rails and uh, scanning electron microscopic studies. Uh, again, thank you for giving me this opportunity to present. and. I'm willing to take questions if you have any. Any questions from the audience? Okay, in absence of questions, now I invite Dr. A. Umarane. Our postdoctoral fellow and a DST woman scientist A from pharmaceutical chemistry department. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you for the introduction. Once again, thank you. For uh, once again, uh, wish you happy life. Thank you, Chandrasekhar Kohli, sir, for sparing your valuable time and uh, even in uh, hard timings, also you have uh, cope up with us. Ma ओनलीटोजल Maltose has uh, it. It is because of its ability to crystallize. We have studied even various. Even lactose and sucrose also can be crystallized. No, you need to have tough. Uh, I mean, relatively uh, high to you know the height to the base ratio. So what happens is, if I use lactose, they become brittle upon piercing the skin. It has to resist. It has to somehow my inner uh, elastic property as well as uh, resistant to certain pressure. practically it should withstand up to the i mean uh, we say 3 newton pressure then it will break okay so, and the main aspect is uh, the second main aspect we used is maltose has much loading uh, much higher loading capacity as we saw with the drugs uh, as compared to the other substances uh, in other experiments like we used uh, cmc and all they have proven to be much more But uh, uh, um, in microneedles, uh, lack of non-uniformity is very high. Thank you. Is there any combination of the maltose and uh, some other sugar? Is that did you try like that only alone maltose? Any synergistic effect of the some of the maltose or any other component in the similar fashion to delivery systems? Uh, uh you know we have and the problem is going to be it melts at a specific temperature if i am going to use two different substances one melts and uh, uh you won't get uniform thing both of them should have same the melting point otherwise you won't get a structures microstructures that are uh, strong enough to resist uh, piercing into the skin i mean there are number of substances a yeah, huge number of combinations you could try but like we basically tried only few thank you sir thank you for your valuable time and thank you for asking questions also so chandrasekhar sir thank you so much i have a good day sir good night thank you yeah thank you have a good day to you all Dear all, all the, dear all, uh, here with we are closing this session of uh, morning. Two speakers talk, and uh, we are going to start the afternoon session by two p.m. Uh, with our S.K. Jain Garu and uh, Meka Lingam Garu.
uh, as the two speakers and uh, hope you are enjoying the session and we will meet in the afternoon thank you thank you so much thanks ma'am thank you
Hello? Yes, hi. Sir, am I audible, sir? Sir? Uh, barely. Can you, I can hear you, but not very well. We can't listen your voice, sir. Sorry? We can't able to hear your voice, sir. Okay, what should I do? Wait for a, sir, sir, wait for a while, sir, sir. Okay, all right. Sir, can you speak now, sir? I'm sorry, did you say something? Sir, wait, uh, sir, uh, uh, sir. Sir, ma'am, just arrived. Sir. Okay, all right. Good morning, sir. Hi. Good morning. Good, good. Hello, how are you? Uh, fine, sir. This is Shalya. Nice to meet you. Okay. Huh. Wonderful. <laughs> Sir, now we will see the test trial. I'm sorry? Now we will see the test trial. Okay, from right. Email, from your Gmail, you from your Gmail, you click the link. Yes, I did. Oh, I okay. did. Okay, you got it, it sir? Uh, and, it, and, it, and it said, waiting for somebody to let me in. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. we'll see. Sir, your presentations... Sir. Yes, I put it on Google Slides. I I have it on Google Slides. Okay, your slides no, you should keep on your desktop, sir. On my desktop. Okay. Ah, yes. I have that also. Yes, sir. Then uh, present now. Share the slides. Okay, you may.
Is it audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Is it audible? Yeah, it is audible, sir. It is audible. It's good, sir. So within five minutes or ten minutes, we'll start, sir. Ah, no problem.
Good afternoon, one and all. Welcome to our afternoon session. Our Sanjay Jain Garu uh, is ready to give a talk on the polymers related delivery systems, colon targeting, and uh, drug delivery systems. And before he starts, I welcome you uh, to our webinar on this uh, auspicious occasion. I hope. Uh, you are very happy by interacting with our professors who are very nearer to you. And uh, they are ready, sir, uh, for interacting with you. Sir, KPR Chaudhary Master wants to give a brief introduction and uh, interaction uh, about Professor S.K. Jingaru. Sir, over to you. Chaudhary Master. Uh, okay. Uh, good afternoon, all. Salida Madam, it is not an introduction, just wishing uh, Dr. Jain from Sagar University. Has he come? No, joined, huh? joined. No, better you show his photograph and then you uh, talk with him. Mm -hmm. Mashar, he will introduce you, uh, audience can introduce Shasar and Murali Krishna. Okay, I think I'll tell you. Okay, just one, one word only. Nali. Introduction okay. has only wishes and the greetings yeah. and good wishes. Okay. Yeah. Let him introduce. Okay. 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 I I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Why is this echo? No, no. One second. Not... Echo, echo is coming. Sir, so, uh, am I clear now? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think you have opened uh, more than one uh, system. That is yes, why. Sir, yes, sir. You're right, sir. You're right, sir. <laughs> yeah, we switched off at the remaining muted. No problem. So it's indeed a great, great privilege to me to introduce our next speaker. Professor Sanjay K. Jain Garu. Uh, he is going to deliver a lecture today on the topic natural and synthetic polymers based colon targeting of drugs, a new aspect for pharma research. Dr. Sanjay K. Jain is a professor of pharmaceutics. Presently, he is head of the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences at Dr. Harising Gaur Central University, Sagar, Madhya Pradesh. He is chairman of Council for Industry Higher Education Collaboration and the University Innovation Council and also University IPR cell. His main research area is the design and development of various new drug delivery systems for the treatment of diseases, especially related to gastrointestinal tract and brain. With over 30 years of experience, Professor Jain has presented his innumerable papers 
on various platforms on in within india and abroad dr jain has been awarded thrice with idma award for best research paper and dr r k upadhyay national teachers excellence award 2012 and many prestigious awards besides he has been conferred with one of the india's most prestigious award visitors award 2018 by our honorable president of india shri ramnath kovind ji at rashtrapati bhavan new delhi he is a member of editorial board for uh, critical reviews in therapeutic drug carrier systems uh, begel house uk and he is life member of many learned societies and he is he has organized several training programs and conferences to spread the knowledge uh, with this brief introduction i now invite professor sk jain ji to deliver his talk thank you sir thank you mulli sir so i request uh, professor k p r choudhary master to interact with the uh, people and uh, to give his words Uh, good afternoon all and particularly good afternoon sir dr sanjay j sanjay k good, good afternoon sir good afternoon good after long time i am seeing you after long time okay, how are you fine fine sir how are you i think okay. i am just fine okay. i am just fine okay okay thank you very much for accepting uh, the invitation of andhra university and particularly dr k v ramanamurthy who happened to be ah, my best friend nice. so far <laughs> uh, I have to accept it because it is a superannuation function of my friend. Yes, yes, yes. I yes, have yes. to accept it. Yes, There is no. Yes, yeah. uh, I welcome you to Andhra University this international webinar, and uh, the topic which you select is wonderful, and in fact, it is much relevant to the today's function as uh, the function is arranged in honor of our see our professor. Uh, K V Ramanamurthy. So K V Ramanamurthy is uh, since uh, beginning he has shown much interest in natural excipients. During uh, 80 85 itself he started research work in the area of uh, natural excipients, gums and other polymers, and he made use of several studies and uh, made use of those materials to the modern drug delivery systems so, like control release, parasitoid drug delivery systems. chrono drug delivery system for all these purposes he, uh, he put the natural polymers only and he has made several contributions in this area and we feel proud of him dr ramanamurthy and similarly you, i also understand that you have done significant work in this area and it is befitting that you attended today's uh, uh, international webinar and we are all fortunate and uh, myself as well as all our students are eagerly waiting to hear from you so thank you sir for accepting and uh, wish you good luck thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you <clears throat> yeah good afternoon how are you i'm just fine how are you ah huh? yeah. thank you thank you for gracing today's uh, webinar with your knowledge and expertise i re i'm really very 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 thankful to you for accepting the invitation without any hesitation so once again thank you so please uh, start your lecture thank you so Can well uh, to all our friends in sagar <laughs> you are all welcome at sagar uh, after when the situation will come down uh, <laughs> let's see please make a visit to sagar Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank This is also uh, my request to Professor K P R Chaudhary sir also to please visit Sagar. Yes. Right? You should uh, visit uh, that uh, on what situation we are working yes. now. Yes. Yes. Please. Long back I visited sir. Long back. I know. I know. I know sir. Long <laughs> time back. <laughs> now now everything is changed now. Now yes. everything. Should I start now? Yeah. Please. Start. So you can start. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your for your kind words. So well, uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Murli Krishnan and uh, Professor K P R Chowdhury. 
accepted my request immediately through phone call uh, as uh, he is very much nearer to raman murthy garu and we we are very much uh, happy sir and uh, very much fortunate to have your uh, talk on our webinar please sir go through uh, the start up of your talk sir thank you so much should i start shall ya Shelja, should we start now? Okay, sir, you can start. There will be no disturbance. No yes, disturbance. sir. Yes, sir. You can start, sir. <coughs> so well, uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, Professor K P R Chaudhary. I pay my uh, respect to K P R Chaudhary and thank to uh, Dr. Uh, Molly Kishan for giving my introduction and. Uh, my friend uh, professor k b uh, ramana murthy uh, i am really privileged to speak on the occasion of this uh, superannuation function of my friend professor k b r murthy and uh, today he is looking much happy i don't know why and during uh, his service he was a uh, little bit intense now he is relaxed and uh, he looks uh, that uh, he is a uh, much relax now i am sure that uh, after his super innovation from the university he will not uh, uh, detach from the uh, active uh, guidance to uh, his students i am sure that uh, his experience will be very very beneficial to the juniors or students of the anda university and he will be associated with the uh, anda university right he will keep associating with the anda university after his retirement so uh, when i received a call from uh, shelja and uh, requested that uh, professor uh, kb r ramana uh, kb uh, ramana murthy is retiring on sense and uh, they are uh, celebrating super annuation super annuation function then uh, and uh, i have to speak on uh, the occasion of this uh, uh, function of uh, super annuation of uh, dr murthy then i immediately i said okay i i will speak and it is my privilege to speak uh, on this occasion and so then i i am thinking you know, what i supposed to speak on uh, the super innovation of a great sci scientist and uh, i know that uh, professor uh, murthy is working on the excipients natural excipients how to use next natural excipients in the fabrication of various uh, drug delivery system then i decided yeah, i should say something about the excipients which are used for the targeting drug to the colon especially the colon because uh, you know that uh, colon is the last part of the gastrointestinal tract and delivering drug uh, to the colon through the oral route is uh, not a difficult task so how we can use these uh, natural excipients uh, for the fabrication of the colon specific drug delivery system and uh, uh, saying about anything uh, about the natural experience in front of the professor ramana murthy is uh, not the easy task but uh, if uh, if there is any uh, wrong statement please uh, pardon me and uh, excuse me also and uh, if required uh, professor murthy can uh, rectify that statement anyway uh, i have a great association with the professor uh, ramana murthy since last uh, 20 years uh, we have a great association we have a scientific dis discussion on different forum and uh, we have very good uh, uh, company at uh, when i visited uh, visakhapatnam whenever i visit uh, visakhapatnam certainly i have a uh, great help from the uh, professor murthy thanks for them and unfortunately i could not meet uh, professor uh, uh, kpr uh, 
Chaudhary. Actually, I was also uh, thinking to meet uh, Professor K P R Chaudhary, but uh, say that uh, at that time he was not in the Vishakhapatnam. Professor Murthy contacted many times, but at that time he was not there. But certainly uh, now, sir, you have to visit Sagar. We uh, will arrange some program. You please visit Sagar when situation will come down uh, normal. Okay, so. Uh, now I share my uh, slides. Is it visible? Shall I? Is it visible? It is visible. It is visible. Okay, so well, uh, um, today I will be talking about the natural and synthetic uh, polymer based uh, colon targeting of that drug. Uh, and we'll uh, discuss some uh, their uh, new aspects. Uh, especially for the fabrication of the colon uh, specific drug delivery system. And uh, when we think about the fabricating any uh, drug delivery system, uh, being pharmacist, we have to face a uh, number of the challenges. Some of the challenges are prevention of drug from the biological degradation. Uh, it is really a challenging task, uh, task because what happened when we take uh, uh, any drug, we administered any drug through any route. Uh, the main uh, reason is uh, the molecule is foreign molecule and it will be thrown out from the body. And we and sometimes what happened because of the uh, natural uh, body uh, uh, defense process, uh, that molecule is not uh, survive for a longer period in the body. So our intention is to prevent this degradation in the biological system. Then the patient compliance, no doubt, whatever doses form we design, it should have a patient compliance. It should be cost effective too. And it should have product life extension. Means the self life of the product should be more because this will affect the cost of the product, right? So uh, the, if we are designing such delivery system which have a, a long uh, shelf life, that will be more beneficial for the as far as the uh, patient point of view, as far as the manufacturer point of view. Maximize drug utilization means uh, th this is the major problem because say if we are uh, we are taking it uh, uh, 100 milligram of drug drug and of uh, uh, through any route of administration, we, if we are administering, then uh, what will happen? Uh, only few microgram of the drug will be utilized by the target organ where that action is desired. So if we design such delivery system which will have which will be utilized completely, then that will be the most beneficial uh, uh, drug delivery system. So that can be achieved by effective targeting if we make the such delivery system which will effectively deliver drug to the desired site, uh, then that will be the effective target, uh, targeting. So by that effective targeting, we can uh, maximize drug utilization, we can uh, uh, increase patient compliance, we can protect uh, drug degradation in the biological system as well as we can also extend the uh, shelf life of the product. 
say uh, being the sign, uh, pharmacy scientist uh, when we think about the designing of any drug delivery system our intention is to keep the concentration above the minimum effective concentration at the site of action only then we'll get the uh, desired effect right so you are in our intention is to keep drug concentration above the minimum effective concentration and to reduce the side effect of that drug we have to keep drug concentration in the biological system or the site of action below the maximum safe level so our intention is to keep drug concentration uh, above the mec and below the msc means we have to keep drug concentration in the therapeutic window for a longer period of time that will be the best if you are able to keep drug concentration in the therapeutic window then that uh, drug delivery system is the will be the best drug delivery system as far as this action or patient compliance is concerned Uh, then uh, why the targeting is required, as I told you, to just to maximize the uh, drug utilization as to increase the therapeutic efficacy of the drug, we must have to target the drug. Uh, we have to design such delivery system which will deliver drug specifically to the particular organ. So why target, uh, targeted drug delivery is required just to exclusive delivery to a specific identify organs of the body, reduces uh, drug access by other irrelevant uh, non-target cells, reduce uh, drug toxicity and side effects, and maximize intrinsic activity of the drug because uh, whatever drug we deliver uh, through any of the route of administration, it will be delivered um, uh, in uh, maximum amount of the drug will be delivered to the target organ and will get the response of the drug. So uh, the, uh, it increased the intrinsic activity of the drug. Then uh, uh, the colon targeting. Say colon targeting means uh, the delivering drug to the colon or the large intestine. That is the last part of the uh, our gastrointestinal tract just before the rect rectum. That is the colon. So uh, why colon is used as a potential site for the drug delivery? Because uh, it has low hostile environment, means the effect of the other uh, uh, enzymes or the change in the uh, pH, all will have uh, uh, low effect on case of the colon. Low colonic transit time as a long colonic transit time means the residence time of the content of the colon is uh, very high is a two, uh, 20 to 30 hours so we can uh, if the our delivery system is remaining in the colon for say 20 to 30 hours uh, then we can manipulate its release in the colon and we can get the desired release and desired effect in the colon then uh, that it has in the colon has a unique microbial flora. Unique, unique microbial flora is means it is our colon is full of microorganisms, beneficial microorganisms, which are used for digesting the uh, undigested uh, uh, meal, which is coming from the upper part of the GIT. When I say upper part of the GIT, it means the stomach or small intestine. So the meal, undigested meal or food, which is coming from the small intestine into the colon it will be digested by the uh, this unique microflora means it is uh, our micro uh, colon is having the aerobic and non-aerobic microRNAs and it is highly responsive to absorption and answer why i have written this that because uh, if we in the uh, next slide when you see the colonic membrane it is a very complex membrane and uh, uh, absorption from these through this co uh, colonic membrane is a uh, difficult one and you will require if you want to deliver the drug from the colonic lumen to the zero society you will require to change the permeability of the colonic membrane and for that you will require some permission and answer so this colonic membrane is highly responsive uh, responsive to the uh, permission and answers so colonic uh, delivery we can achieve either by administering that through the oral route or through the rectal route, right? 
so uh, the rectal route is not we know that it is not a convenient route for the administration of the drug and frequent administration of the drug as well it is not uh, uh, as well as it requires some uh, expertise to administer drug to the colon through the rectal route most convenient route of administration is the oral administration so the through the oral administration uh, by using the suitable uh, strategy we can uh, achieve colon uh, specific drug delivery so if you see the structure of the colon then uh, colon uh, forms the lower part of the git and ex extend from the ileocecal junction that is the last part of the small intestine uh, to the anus and our uh, colon is upper 5 feet of the large intestine and rectum is a lower feet, uh, lower 6 inches after the colon it has the if you see the colonic membrane it has number of the membranes right and if you want to deliver drug from the colonic lumen to the serosal side is the blood then you will uh, drug has to cross all these barriers uh, mucous membrane some mucous membrane circular muscular membrane longitudinal mucous membrane and serosal side apart from that uh, the mere colonic membrane is having the uh, it is uh, uh, the cells of the epithelial cells are joined together. It, uh, the intercellular space is very less. They are uh, joined together by uh, occluder junction proteins. So the permission of the molecule through the colon, colonic membrane is difficult one. Uh, if you are designing any drug delivery system uh, for the uh, colon, then uh, you will require required to know about the gastrointestinal tract, uh, the tract through which uh, the, your design drug delivery system will be traveling. And uh, so if you see that uh, after the oral administration, drug will go into the esophagus and esophagus it will come into the stomach, which is having the length of 20 centimeter and pH of the stomach uh, is 1.5 to 2 and residence time of the the uh, stomach is one to three hours, right? But uh, after that, it uh, the content will go into the small intestine. This is the small intestine. Uh, it is having total length of 730, approximately 730 centimeter, and total residence time of the small intestine is three to five hours, right? And uh, small intestine is uh, having the three parts, that is duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. The pH of the duodenum is 4.5 to 5, then it is gradually increasing and it will reach to the 6 or 7.5 at the uh, last part of the uh, small intestine. So, well, uh, in the small intestine, uh, uh, the last part of the small intestine will be having pH about 7 or 7.5 when drug will or content will reach into the colon that is a, through the cecum it will uh, reach into the ascending colon right this is the uh, uh, colon of the human being and it is uh, ascending colon is uh, 20 centimeter in length uh, having pH 6.4 plus minus 0.6 so well uh, if you see the content which is coming from the ileum or ileocecal region to the colon that there is a sudden fall in that ph from 7.5 to 6.4 it is because of the uh, fermentation of the polysaccharides right and formation of the short chain fatty acids in the ascending colon so it's like uh, lactose is fermented to lactic acid and because of formation of lactic acid the ph is uh, drop down in the ascending colon then the ph is gradually increasing in the uh, another part of the git say then after ascending colon there is a transverse colon then descending colon and sigmoid colon and the ph is uh, rising from uh, 6.4 to 7.5 or 8 in the sigmoid colon right the residence time of this uh, uh, colon is uh, more or less uh, uh, 40 or 48 hours, right? And uh, last part, that is the uh, rectum that is having the length 12 centimeter and pH is 7. 
So by this variation, not if you uh, see the pH uh, in the gastrointestinal tract, uh, GIT, then you will find that a lot of variation in the uh, pH, and that variation in the pH can be used for targeting the drug to the colon. I was talking about the unique microflora of the uh, colon. Then uh, you will see that uh, upper part of the GIT, that is the stomach, uh, small intestine, right? All are having about uh, uh, six uh, of this uh, microorganisms, um, six species of microorganisms, that is Clostridium, Micropocus, Arsena, E. coli. Uh, Cella and Proteus. These are the microns are present in the upper part of the GIT. But if you see in the colon, that is a, there is a long list of aerobic and anaerobic bacteria which are present in the colon. Bacteroids, bifidobacteria, uh, eubacteria. So there are a long list of the microorganisms or bacteria present in the colon. And these all are the beneficial uh, bacteria. And uh, if you see the uh, bacteria, uh, these bacteria present in the um, feces, which is coming from the rectum, it is a 30% of the dry weight of feces consisted of the bacteria. So you can imagine the, the population of the bacteria that are present in the colonic region. If you see the bacteria count in different part of the GIT, then you will find that stomach is having uh, very less uh, amount of the uh, bacteria that is a 0 to 10 to the power 3 colony forming unit per ml, while uh, ileum is having 10 to the power 3 to 10 to the power 7 colony forming unit per ml, but colon is full of the bacteria that is a 10 to the power 11 to 10 to the power 12 colony forming unit per ml. And because of the presence of these uh, uh, bacteria, different enzymes were uh, are released. That is the reducing enzyme and hydrolytic enzymes by the bacteria, right? Like uh, reducing enzyme that is released in the colonic region. That is nitro reductase, azo reductase, N oxy oxide reductase, sulfoxide reductase. And under this uh, hydrolytic enzymes, then esterases, amidases, glycosidases, glucuronicidase, sulfatase, these are the enzymes released in the uh, colonic visa by colonic region by the colonic bacteria. And because of the presence of the, these enzymes, different metabolic reactions are uh, taking place in the colonic visa, uh, region, that is hydro hydrolysis, reduction, decarboxylation, dialkylation, halogenation, deamination, acetylation, esterification. These are the different reactions of uh, enzyme released by the colonic bacteria. But for the fabrication of the uh, uh, site of specific uh, drug delivery to the colon. Two enzymes are mainly used as a reductase enzyme, which is redu which reduces the azo bond selectively. If your polymer structure is having the azo bond, that is the N double bond, and then uh, it will be uh, digested by the azo reductase enzyme released by the azobacter present in the colonic region, and they this after the digestion, if it is having any drug, drug will be released. Say another enzyme that is a, there are a number of polysaccharidase enzymes are released in the uh, colonic region by the colonic bacteria. And they, these polysaccharidase enzymes are responsible for the degradation of polysaccharides. So today uh, I will discuss about the, these two enzymes, using these two enzymes, how will you uh, use different uh, natural and synthetic uh, excipients for the fabrication of for, for site-specific delivery of the uh, colon-specific drug delivery system. Before that, uh, we must have to understand also the barriers uh, present in the colonic uh, region. There are so many barriers are present for the absorption of the drug from the colonic lumen to the serosal site. 
it has very small surface area as compared to this small intestine the surface area of colon is very less and uh, in the colon uh, you will find uh, dietary component undigested dietary component and their product release from the colonic bacteria number of the excretes of the colonic bacteria are present in the colonic region and they are responsible for the specific and non specific drug binding uh, with the uh, drug as well as the uh, the viscosity of the colonic content is very high which impacts the diffusion of the drug from the lumen to the mucosal side so that will produce hindrance in the movement of the drug in the colonic lumen then uh, it has the thick uh, mucus layer uh, over the surface of the epithelial membrane of the colon which retards drug reaching to the epithelial surface for the absorption this is will also act as a barrier and a unstructured water layer you will find in the colonic membrane just below the epithelial membrane there is a water layer unstructured water layer and that will be great barrier for the lipophilic drug if the you are able to cross the uh, this lipophilic barrier then uh, it has to cross the hydrophilic uh, uh, water unstructured water layer that it has to cross so it is a great barrier and it produces great hindrance for the Absorption of the drug from the colonic uh, site. Then uh, the membrane, as I told you, that uh, epithelial membrane of the colon is uh, has uh, it has unique features. It has a colonocyte and occluding junction complex, uh, which uh, uh, binds uh, the cells together, and it is not leaving any intercellular space. So the absorption is. Uh, hindered by this uh, colonocyte and occluded junction complex. Then epithelial membrane, it is highly uh, lipophilic uh, membrane, so it is a barrier for the hydrophilic drug. So through that, uh, because of this barrier, only the absor absorption of the any uh, drug from the colon is very low, and only water and dissolved minerals are absorbed. So if you see that, uh, if you compare with the conventional and uh, colon specific doses form, then in the case of the uh, uh, this uh, conventional doses form, if you take uh, uh, a tablet, conventional tablet through the oral route, it will go into the stomach and it will disintegrate in the gastric fluid and uh, if uh, that and release that drug. If the drug is having the uh, desired property, then it absorb either it will absorb from the stomach or from the small intestine and very little amount of the drug will reach to the colonic lumen if it is delivered through if the drug is delivered through the uh, conventional doses form but in case of the oral uh, colon if the drug is uh, delivered through the colon directly the delivery system then uh, administered through the oral route then it will be intake in the small intestine it will be uh, it will be intake in the stomach it will be intake in the small intestine but when it will reach into the colon the material or excipient will be digested by the enzymes of the colonic lumen and drug will be released Say again, this is the another way for the explaining the uh, differences between the conventional doses form and the colon targeted delivery system. Say uh, a, a very uh, well known uh, drug uh, that you might have heard about the that is the metronidazole. Metronidazole is the you is it is used for the treatment of amyasis, chronic amyasis, acute amyasis. And for the treatment of amoebiasis means you are required to kill the amoeba which are present in the uh, this uh, colonic site because the may uh, the uh, in the colon the amoeba is residing and you are required to deliver drug to the colon right sufficient amount of the drug to be delivered to the colon but if it is metronidazole is delivered through the conventional dose uh, conventional uh, doses form then what will happen? Most of that metronidazole that will be released in the upper part of the GIT, that is in the stomach or small intestine, 
and it will absorb and it will reach to the uh, this uh, systematic circulation so high amount of the drug will reach into the systematic circulation and through the systematic circulation the drug will come into the colon right so uh, and very limited unabsorbed drug will reach into the uh, this colon so this is the main drawback because of that uh, uh, because more amount of in the conventional form more amount of the metronidazole is reaching through the systematic circulation and it will show the side effects so drug is not directly coming into the colon it is coming through the blood to the colon but if the metronidazole is delivered through the colon specific the delivery system then maximum amount of the drug will reach to the colon and very little amount of the drug will be absorbed from the uh, intestine of the uh, human being so well uh, so we'll get the very less uh, toxicity if it is directly delivered to the colon or through the colon targeted delivery system this is the major effect and uh, because uh, you are required to deliver the effective concentration that is in uh, very little quantity of the metronidazole required to kill this uh, this uh, little uh, uh, amoeba so but uh, you know the dose of the metronidazole that is the 1.5 to 2 gram per day for such a high dose you have to uh, administer for delivering this uh, uh, microgram concentration to the colon because drug will come through the blood to the colon and very little unabsorbed drug will reach to the colon so sufficient quantity of the colon uh, metronidazole should come into the should uh, be uh, should uh, be delivered to the colon for killing the amoeba so if the that microgram concentration if we deliver through the colon targeted delivery system then uh, it will be more effective will have less affected and low, uh, low dose is required so for which type of the drug is generally used for targeting drug to the colon those drugs which are having the poor bioavailability from the stomach and small intestine like peptides or those drugs which are having the deleterious effect on the gastric mucosa that can also be used for colon targeting and especially drug required for the treatment of diseases associated with the colon like amoebiasis colorectal cancer ulcerative colitis inflammatory bowel disease for the treatment of these uh, colonic disease you will require to deliver effective concentration of drug to the colon right so uh, these are the some example of the uh, drug uh, which are used for uh, colon targeting like digestive enzyme supplement these, these are the sulfa selagin epsilagin valsalagin melsalagin there are the product of the five amino salicylic acid prednisolone this is also used for the treatment of the uh, inflamed bowel disease Crohn's disease irritable, irritable bowel disease right and five fluoroidocil can also be used for the treatment of the colorectal cancer if it is delivered for uh, specifically to the colon non stradal uh, anti inflammatory drugs typhoid uh, uh, oral for oral vaccine insulin for oral delivery of peptides that can be uh, effectively delivered through the uh, colon specific delivery system there are uh, these are the different approaches by by which we can uh, achieve uh, colon targeting now using the product like uh, azobon drug glycoside uh, uh, product cyclodextrin product dextran product size depending the delivery system by reducing the size we can increase the its uh, adherence with the colonic membrane so site specific delivery system we can fabricate surface charge depending the delivery system is cationic anionic both uh, uh, charge delivery system can also be used for especially delivery to the colon ph dependent delivery system is using the ph dependent solution so at particular ph the drug uh, the polymer will be dissolved and drug will be released so that can be used uh, for fabrication of the colon drug delivery system then biodegradable drug delivery system means uh, using the polysaccharides or gums uh, we can uh, fabricate suitable uh, drug delivery system that will be degraded in the uh, 
colon by the release of the polysaccharides enzymes that you, so polysaccharide will be digested by the polysaccharides enzyme or that will be released using the redox drug delivery system means the uh, reactive oxygen species in some of the uh, diseases like uh, inflammatory bowel disease uh, the ros level is increased many times and that uh, ros level can be used for uh, degrading the that uh, polymer we synthesize uh, the thiol ethyl polymer that is the uh, oxygen sensitive polymer so that will be uh, degraded by the ros uh, reactive oxygen species present in the colon and drug will be released active targeting uh, dependent drug delivery system this is the approach new a very new approach on which i got uh, the president about on this uh, approach active targeting is the targeting of the drug to the colonic lesion by uh, using the some vector or uh, ligands which will be attached which was attached with the uh, drug delivery system and again it is further uh, uh, treated and will get these some um, active targeting dependent drug delivery system so that uh, that is based on the dual targeting means the delivery system will be targeted to the colon and from colon uh, it will be targeted to the colorectal cancer so whole amount of the drug which is given release uh, system that is uh, very well uh, known example of this is the pulsing cap means the release, release of the drug if you are able to delay the release of the drug Uh, by the time your system will reach to the colon so if you are able to delay the release say 5 to 6 hour by the time your system or delivery system will reach to the uh, it will reach to the uh, colon so this is the about the um, materials or excipients which are generally used for fabrication of colon target delivery system some of the natural uh, there are a number of natural uh, polymers that can be used for fabrication of the colon targeted drug delivery like uh, guar gum pectin cetosin uh, inulin amylose alginate this is the spelling mistake it is the alginate chondroitin sulfate beta cyclodextrin these are the natural polymer that can be used for the fabrication of the colon specific drug delivery system and some of the synthetic polymers like psn sensitive polymers can be used so those polymers which are dissolved at the ph of 6.5 uh, of 6.5 right and below uh, 7.5 then can be used for the uh, fabrication of the colon specific drug delivery system or we can use azo aromatic polymers azo aromatic polymer will be having the azo bond in the skeleton of the Uh, that uh, polymer so that uh, polymer will be uh, unaffected in the part of the git when it will reach into the bond as a bond and your poly and the, that as aromatic polymer become porous one and drug will be released so the product approach uh, that is using the some uh, natural uh, uh polysaccharides we can make a product with that uh, polysaccharides like glycoside product cyclodextrin product or dextrin product we can make we can use these products for the uh, site specific delivery of the drug to the colon say glycoside uh, product uh, uh, the glycosidase enzyme is responsible for cleaving the glycoside bond right and that uh, glycosidase enzyme is released by the colon afterward apart from the glycosidase enzyme some or other polysaccharide enzymes also release in the colon that is a beta d glycosidase beta d glucosidase uh, alpha, uh, alpha l arabino furanosidase beta d xylopyranosidase these are the polysaccharide these enzymes released by the colonic bacteria and they are responsible for uh, this uh, cleaving the glycoside or glucogalactoside bond right so there are uh, there are two enzyme uh, example of this type of product is a dexamethasone um, 
product of dexamethasone and prednisolone where uh, uh, they have prepared with the glucoside or beta galactoside bond so this is the example of dexamethasone 21 b beta d glucoside right so this uh, uh, drug will be released by uh, when this enzyme is uh, acting and cleaving this uh, glycoside uh, bond then cyclodextrin product uh, as you know cyclodextrin uh, is very widely used for the increasing the water solubility of the water insoluble drug but if if the if the water insoluble drug is encased inside this beta cyclodextrin we'll get, we can enhance the solubility of the water insoluble drug in the water but uh, if you conjugate uh, the drug with the the OH group or functional group present over the surface of the beta cyclodextrin, we can have a uh, product, beta cyclodextrin drug uh, 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 complex, that uh, this, this is the covalently bind, right? And uh, here, the B, uh, this polysaccharides enzyme will be active. When this, will, this complex uh, delivered through the oral load, it will be unaffected in the our part of the GIT, but uh, when it reaches into the colon, the polysaccharides enzyme will be acting, uh, cleave this bond and will get the uh, your parent drug. And the cy cyclodexin is, is excreted and changed with the feces. Uh, then, uh, dextran product, uh, drug which are uh, conjugated with the dextrans are extremely degraded by dextranase enzyme present in the colon. These are uh, dextranase enzyme is also released by the colonic bacteria. So uh, the product uh, uh, with the dextran, we can uh, synthesize product of the uh, this uh, methylprednisolone or dexamethasone with the dextran and using the succinate or glucurate bond and we can have the product which will be exclusively delivered drug to the colon. Now, uh, we can use pH dependent WLB system. As you know that uh, the pH of the, uh, our gastrointestinal tract is uh, varying from 1.2 to the 8, right? It's a lot of variation in the pH and this variation in the pH we can use for uh, so pH of the terminal helium or that terminal helium is last part of the small intestine and, and colon is generally very high. So we can code the drug delivery system with the PSN state polymer like Utrazit or design we can fabricate a nano delivery system with the PSN state polymer which are having the drug right that can uh, uh, using this uh, approach we can uh, effectively deliver drug to the colon. And it does it beside this PSN state, uh, if you use it as, uh, as a PSN state polymer, uh, beside this PSN state, they also exhibit mucoelicity. So that is an uh, additional advantage. It does it, uh, there are certain examples where it does it is used for fabricating the colon specific technology system, say nanoparticles coated with the eutrazid or liposomes coated with the eutrazid, which are bearing the drug. So, but the uh, main disadvantage uh, in this, uh, if you use this approach, that is the interindigital or interindigital variation in the pH is more. And so there are chances of releasing of the drug in the upper part of the GIT. If the, uh, some physiological condition is changed and the pH is changed, right? So there are chances of releasing of the drug in the upper part of GIT before, or we can say that before reaching to the colon drug may release. So this is the about the eudrazit, eudrazit L or S, which are dissolved at the pH uh, more than uh, say 6.5. So that uh, eudrazit L or S can be used for the fabrication of uh, the uh, colon specific drug system. So it contains a carboxylic acid group and they remain intact in the acidic environment for uh, of stomach and dissolve at pH moves towards the alkaline range by forming the salt.
So well, uh, this is uh, how you can simply you can fabricate uh, colon specific delivery system in our lab. Just uh, cap a heart, heart gelatin capsule, fill the drug in the heart gelatin capsule, cap it, uh, right? And uh, you coat this uh, capsule with the PS sensitive polymer of uh, suitable thickness. So this uh, coated PS sensitive polymer coated capsule will be intact in the stomach because uh, environment of stomach is uh, acidic. So coating will not dissolve and it will get the suitable pH in the intestine that is the distal part of the GIT that is it ileum or cecum. So the coating will start dissolving by the time your system uh, will, these capsules will reach into the colon where the, uh, there is no coating of the this, uh, polymer, PSS polymer, uncoated uh, capsule will reach into the colon and colon, uh, capsule will disintegrate at least that drug. So this is very simple uh, system you can uh, design in your lab. Then uh, biodegradable drug delivery system, there are a number of uh, 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 specific enzymes are released uh, exclusively in the colon by the bacteria like uh, azotriptase, polysaccharides, which are responsible for degrading or digesting the different natural as well as the synthetic polymers. And so similarly, we can, uh, using those polymers, natural or synthetic polymer, we can uh, uh, design our delivery system, either we can design nano delivery system or we can design micro delivery system, we can make uh, beads, we can uh, make tablets, matrix tablet of azoronic polymer, alginates, or polysaccharides, and we can specifically deliver drug to the colon. So there are some uh, biotic uh, natural polymers that can be used for the fabrication of the uh, this uh, colon specific drug relief system. First is the pectin. Pectin, as uh, we know that it is the non-starch linear polysaccharides that consist of alpha 1,4 D galacto, uh, galactoronic acid and 1,2 D uh, ramnose with D galactose and D arabinose side chains. So this uh, uh, pectin is uh, digested by the pectinase enzyme released by the colonic uh, um, bacteria and we can get a uh, specific uh, drug release in the colon. So pectin along with the, some uh, synthetic polymer can be used like uh, ethyl cellulose, HPMC or chitosin and we can have a compressed compression coating uh, for achieving the colon specific delivery of the drug, right? We can have the, uh, we can prepare microspheres and nanospheres uh, or matrix tablet of this pectin for uh, specific delivery of the drug to the colon. Uh, in our lab, we have prepared calcium pectin microspheres for colon specific delivery of the drug, especially methotrexate. So pectin uh, solution in the 3% pectin solution in uh, phosphatoperciline is prepared and uh, twin ATP and uh, drug is dispersed in the pectin solution and this dispersion is uh, dispersed in the isoactin uh, having the pH 80 and stir for 10 minutes right at 1500 rpm the emulsion that is a water in oil emulsion and this is further stir for 10 minutes at 1500 rpm and dispersion uh, is uh, the dispersion of pectinate containing the drug in the isooctane is hardened by adding the calcium chloride solution 35%. So pectin will be reacted with the calcium ions and we get the calcium pectinate. Hard uh, microspheres that will be separated by centrifugation and for the washing with suitable solvent. This is the uh, uh, same photograph of the uh, microspheres prepared at our lab of pectin. Uh, that is, this is the without drug and this is the with, with drug. And then different uh, in vitro studies, release studies were performed just to see that uh, it, uh, what, uh, how much drug is released at uh, different pH. Then uh, we observed that uh, the drug uh, released in the upper part of the GIT means the pH 1.2, pH 4.5 and pH 7.5, very little, about 10. Uh, uh, 10 to 18% of the drug is released in the 
upper part of the GIT. But when this uh, system will reach into the colon, will come in contact with the colonic fluid, in two hours, 80% of the drug is released. Due to the digestion of the uh, this uh, colon, uh, sorry, pectin with the uh, this uh, enzyme, which uh, pectin is enzyme present in the colonic region. So again, just uh, in some in vitro studies were also performed just to see how much drug is reaching in which part of the GIT. Then I uh, I have observed that uh, uh, the major amount of the drug is observed in the colon after eight hours. Then uh, guaragum uh, polysaccharides can also be used. As you know, it is a ground endosperm of uh, uh, tetragonobus, consists uh, chiefly of high molecular weight uh, hydrochlorides, polysaccharides, composed of galactan and menin units combined through the glycosidic linkage. So this uh, guaragum can also be used for fabrication of the uh, colon specific degradation system. It is hydrophilic in nature and swell in the water, forming viscous colloidal dispersion. It is uh, susceptible to degradation in the colonic environment and suitable for colon drug delivery, uh, uh, colon specific drug delivery system. So we can make a uh, matrix or compress uh, coated tablet with wire uh, gum. And this guaragum is specifically uh, digested in the colon by galactosidase enzyme released by the colonic bacteria in the colon. Then uh, uh, this is the microstrials which we prepare in our lab uh, using the guaragum. So the, the uh, guaragum, 5% guaragum uh, solution is prepared and four drop bys in the castor oil having span 80 and 80 form. A60 uh, yeah, as in, at 60 degrees centigrade, stir for 10 minutes, then uh, glutaldehyde was uh, added uh, just to hardening the, the square gum microspheres. When this is glutaldehyde is properly cross linked with the square gum, the hardened uh, microspheres were separated by centrifugation and uh, frequent washing and dry. This is a photomicrograph of the guaragum microspheres. This is without drug, this is with drug. And again, this uh, different uh, release studies were performed in the colonic, uh, simulated colonic fluid with or without red sickle content. Red sickle, we have used red sickle content just to see what will be the effect of the red sickle content on the release of the drug from the guaragum microspheres. So then I we observed that uh, there is a uh, about uh, uh, almost 80 to 90 percent uh, uh, release is increased if we add uh, red sickle content because in red sickle content it is the it is have it 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 is having the uh, enzyme which is responsible for digesting the uh, that uh, guaragum microsphere. So uh, then uh, we have induced uh, uh, that uh, enzyme, uh, guaragum uh, polysaccharides enzyme in the animals by feeding the animal with the guaragum for four or five days. Right here, the four days is uh, uh, guaragum is giving to the animal. And we observe that, uh, and then we observe that uh, after the, when we add this, uh, uh, sickle content, which is having the enzyme, uh, uh, which is uh, which is induced uh, having the enzyme, uh, this uh, polysaccharide enzyme, right, in a large amount, then it will the release is further increase from uh, then 21 percent uh, high release is observed as compared to the without induction of the enzyme. Then uh, another one is uh, polysaccharide uh, is amylose, which is digested by the polysaccharide is enzyme released by the colonic uh, uh, and, uh, bacteria. Amylose is polysaccharide obtained from plant extract, and uh, it is a component of the starch. 
a myelose is a poly 1,4 alpha D uh, glucopyranose that consists of D glucopyranose residue linked by the alpha 1,4 bonds. So, epichlorhydrin treated uh, cross link amylose can be used for the control release of the uh, drug and that uh, is used for the control release of the theophyllin in the gastrointestinal tract and that uh, will lead drug delivery to the colonic region. Amylose uh, ethisol coating uh, system for the colon targeting also designed by using the ethosyl methyl cellulose derivative along with the amylose. Uh, a colon specific degradation system is designed, right? That will exclusively release drug to the colon. Then um, inulin. It is another polysaccharide that can also be used for the fabrication of the colon specific degradation system. Say so inulin is uh, digested in the colon by the release of the inulase enzyme. It is a natural occurring uh, storage polysaccharide found in many plants such as onion, garlic, artichoke, and uh, chicory. Chemically, it, is, uh, it belongs to the glucofractans and consists of a mixture of uh, oligomers and polymers containing two to six or more uh, beta 2 1 linked D fructose molecules. So, this uh, inulin enzyme is specifically uh, is digested by the inulase enzyme released by the bifido bacteria present in the colon. So, various uh, inulin hydrogel have been developed that serve as a potential carrier for the introduction of the drug into the colon along with other synthetic polymer like it was. Another uh, polysaccharide uh, that is the alginate, which is also widely used for the uh, preparation of the colon targeted regulatory system. It is specifically digested by uh, glucosidase enzyme released by the colonic bacteria. So alginates, uh, they are natural hydrophilic polysaccharides derived from the seaweed consists of 1,4-link d manuronic acid and d glucuronic acid residue. And uh, alginates are easily gelled in presence of the divalent cations, in the presence of the calcium, uh, that it, uh, it will react, alginate will react with the uh, calcium and will get the water insoluble calcium alginate, which will be specifically digested uh, by the uh, glucosidase enzyme. So a system was prepared by coating uh, Calcium alginate beads with the aqua coat that is a pH sensitive, uh, pH independent polymer, followed by 2% coating with the Eudrazit LD30. So that uh, it is completely, alginates are coated in such a way that uh, no drug release will release in the upper part of the GI. So all the strategy used to prevent the drug release in the um, upper part of the GIT, it will be, it will exclusively release drug into the colon, right, when this uh, alginate will be digested by the colonic enzymes. Then locust bean can also be used uh, for fabricating the uh, colon specific drug system. It is digested by galactosidase enzyme released in the colon. It is dry from carob seeds. It has an irregular shape molecules with, uh, with branch beta-1 for the galactomanal units. It is a slightly soluble in water, requires heat to reach full hydration and maximum viscosity. Five amino salicylic acid co tablet were compressed, coated with the different quantities of locust bean, gum, and chitosin for colonic delivery of five amino salicylic acid. Then chondritin sulfate can also be used. It is digested by chondritin sulfate lyase enzyme released in the colon, right? It is um, uh, used as a substrate by bacteroids inhibitants of the large intestine, mainly by bacteroids. Uh, theta iota on micron and beta ovatus, right? And contactin sulfate could be used as a carrier for pollen targeted delivery of bioactive agents. So, by using these natural uh, 
um, excipients, you can uh, make uh, a matrix, matrix tablet, right? And uh, this matrix tablet will be intake in the stomach, only you will get a little bit swelling, and uh, it will uh, be intake in the intestine also, little swelling will increase. And but uh, when it will reach into the colon, where the polysaccharides enzyme will be acting, the drug, the polymer will be digested, that will be released. So in that, in this way, you can achieve colon specific WLAB. Then some uh, biodegradable colon specific uh, synthetic polymer can also be used. So as I told you, we can use azoromatic polymer. Like uh, this is an example of. Uh, uh, Styrene 2 hydroxyethylene methacrylate uh, copolymer and these two HEMA and styrene means uh, 2 hydroxyethylene methacrylate is uh, uh, polymerized with uh, in the uh, uh, and styrene is polymerized in the presence of the divinyl either divinyl azobenzene or N in bis beta styrene sulfonyl 44 diamino azobenzene so the when we use this uh, cross linker in the skeleton of uh, the this polymer azo bonds will so many azo bonds will form so this uh, polymer will be intact in the upper part of the git but when it will come into the colonic region uh, the azo reductase enzyme will be uh, will digest this enzyme means it will cleave the azo bond in the skeleton of the this uh, copolymer and your polymer skeleton become porous one and drug will be released. So well, I, either you can prepare uh, uh, nanoparticles of the azoromatic polymer, then you can intercoat it with the intercoating material. So it will be intact in the small in, uh, in the stomach when it reaches into the small intestine. Will they will get suitable pH? The intercoating will dissolve. And then capsules, uh, which is containing the azoaromatic azo uh, uh, polymer, polymeric uh, nanoparticle of azoaromatic uh, polymer, uh, the ca capsule will dissolve and uh, the nanoparticles will be released. And uh, uh, this uh, azoaromatic polymer will be digested by azoaromatic enzyme that is present in the colon and drug will be released. You can make a, a tablet, core tablet, and coat it with the azomatic polymer, so it will be intact in the upper, and further uh, uh, this coated, and uh, this coating uh, will be intact in the stomach, it's small intestine, but when it will reach into the uh, colon, the coating will be dissolved by digestion of the, uh, by the reaction with uh, the azoreactase enzyme, and uh, the coating will become porous one and drug will be released. We can use, we yeah, already discussed, and uh, this is about the redox WLAB system where thioketylase synthetic polymer is uh, synthesized. That is the poly 14 phenylene acetone dimethylene T ketal nanoparticles were prepared and for the delivery of the SIRNA. Uh, it degrades selectively in the response of the reactive oxygen species. In the uh, in case of the ulcerative colitis, the uh, the concentration of reactive uh, oxygen species increased ten to hundred fold. So uh, it is uh, uh, if the drug is to be delivered for the treatment of infectious bowel disease or ulcerative colitis then this polymer is more suitable because in this uh, IBD or acidic colitis, the drug concentration is, uh, sorry, ROS concentration is increased and that will degrade the, uh, this thioketal enzymes, oxidize this thioketal enzyme or drug will be released physically in the colon. This is uh, what uh, active targeting uh, uh, dependent system for the delivery of drug to the colorectal cancer. It provides selected drug, drug accumulation at the disease site within the colon using the ligand. That is the uh, we have tried to uh, uh, target drug to the colorectal cancer, and this will improve the therapeutic efficacy of the drug, reduce adverse reaction because it drug will not absorb by 
they it will not reach into the systemic circulation or some unwanted tissues interaction between the target ligand specific receptor express on the colonic disease sites is used and here the targeting moiety with that we can use transferrin folic acid monoclonal antibody especially in case of the for treatment of the colon uh, colorectal cancer this is the approach uh, we prepare liposomes for containing the anti cancer drug and surface of the this uh, uh, liposomes is uh, modified by the uh, liposomes folic acid, folic acid uh, with the folic acid so this is a folate coupled liposomes in surface uh, of the liposome will be having the folate moiety it is uh, entrapped into the calcium alginate beads these uh, liposomes entrapped in the calcium alginate bead so that uh, calcium alginate will be the colon specific uh, uh, polymer natural polymer and this is uh, so uh, is further coated with the uterositis enter coated polymer because we we do not want to release any drug or any lipos in the upper part of the git if it is released in the upper part of the git there are chances of degradation of the liposomes so that uh, will be uh, this uh, enter coated uh, uterus uh, enter coated uh, calcium alginate beads bearing the liposomes uh, surface modified liposome it will be intake in the stomach the coating will dissolve in the at the ileocecal region when they will get suitable ph the coating will dissolve and this these alginate beads will reach into the colon the polysaccharide is and have digest the uh, this calcium pectinate and liposome surface modified liposomes will come out and since the uh, surface of the liposomes is anchored with the folic acid so the folate it will be sensed by the folic receptor which are over express on the colonic tumor and it will be taken up by this uh, folic receptor and we can get uh, specific delivery of the anti cancer drug to the by uh, to the colonic colorectal cancer so this is we have prepared cross link microspheres of the chitosin uh, and uh, which is uh, further coated with the enter coated polymer these are the photo micrograph because i think the time is exceeding it is already 3 uh, 9 so within a two of uh, say 2 uh, 3 minutes i will conclude it will it be okay selja selja will it be okay okay sir sir So within a yeah, uh, three minutes, I will. Okay. Right. So again, uh, different studies, similar studies were performed. Uh, experience of uh, 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 with sequel content or without sequel content, just to see that the volatility effect of the sequel content on the uh, release of the drug from the uh, chitosin uh, microspheres, and then. Uh, This is, uh, this is the uh, release study we uh, perform in presence of red sickle content after five days enzyme induction, and uh, this is a very new nano composite we uh, fabricated in our lab. Just a minute, my battery is going down. so well this is a nano composite uh, uh within a one minute i have to finish otherwise my my battery laptop battery will go down right so this is have montmorillonite is used and layer complex is uh, nano composite uh, is formed along with the chitosin and in between the layer of the this chitosin or montmorillonite the um, micellar gene is uh, incorporated and this is used for this is uh, uh, designed for the treatment of the uh, inferior bowel disease right 
and uh, the montmorillonite is showing the anti inflammatory activity by absorbing the luminal antigen increase uh, of the colonic uh, 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 increase of the colonic mu mucin level also and possibly a direct uh, modulating action on cytokine produced by the mucosal cells it is well documented that uh, epithelial uh, barrier defect induced by the pro inflammatory cytokine has been restored by the montmorillonite so that why that is why we use uh, uh, this montmorillonite for and chitosin for specific delivery of the mensalogy so it will have dual advantages so this is all for uh, my uh, lecture and this is the photograph of the visitors award which i received in uh, raspati bhavan on 2nd may 2018 Thank you very much. Oh, to Shaya, yes. Yeah, Shaya. No, I invite Dr. K. Arun Santosh. to give to give thanks note uh, on talk of uh, professor uh, sk jain garu please santosh if somebody is having any question they can contact me on my phone or my email because my battery is going down okay yes sir yes sir from audience any questions any questions hello hello am i audible hello yeah yeah, yeah. you can proceed i am you can proceed yeah yeah jain sir you have given very good illustrative uh or uh, work on the uh, nano particles and nano composite is there any plant based drug delivery are you uh a plan for this type of delivery system any plant based drug any plant means uh plant means any medicinal plant what are the active ingredients in the form of uh, uh, the biomolecules so which can planning. Have, yeah i think about the planning which can also have a good uh, anti cancer potential so the, those can also be delivered in this fashion as nano particle uh embedded in these liposomes so that nano particle is mainly derived from this plant uh, extract and you can target that uh, the delivery systems to that particular the organ sure or sure 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 yes you are talking about the uh, plants yes and yes. yeah plants extract yeah yes you can uh, yes. since uh, i am from the pharmaceuticals uh, pharmaceutic side so my intention is to fabricating the drug delivery system but uh, uh, we can uh, incorporate uh, any active ingredient whether it is from the uh, synthetic origin or natural origin we can incorporate in this drug delivery system so are they effective as you have mentioned yeah they will be effective. sure they will be effective one they will be effective one why not if if the plant extract or plant component is uh, uh, specifically working for that particular disease in the for the treatment of particular disease of the colon then we can uh, that will be effective one okay sir okay which one is best mode of delivery system is it liposome mode of delivery system is best or cytosine based delivery system which one is the Best delivery system you can propose. I just could not get your voice was waking. Yeah, yeah. Yes, which please let me repeat. Yes. Yeah, which yeah, yeah. You recommend for this uh, a plant extract or uh, this nano particle delivery system? Yes. Is, is it liposome uh, based delivery systems or is it chitosan based? Say, say, say. What? Is, yes, I got it. I. which one you uh, recommend for the plant based drug molecule 
delivery systems either liposome based or the cytosome based delivery systems hello hello sir am i audible hello sir audible madam wait wait madam maybe please please bear for 2 minutes ma'am maybe power is low for sir sorry uh, yes uh, my question yeah, yeah, please is whether the uh, autosome based delivery system is suitable more or uh, the liposome based uh, delivery system is uh, more appropriate for what for targeting yeah for targeting for targeting that colon cancer for targeting for colon targeting yeah say uh, both uh, system nanoparticles and uh, liposomes both are having their own advantages right okay. and disadvantages now it, it depends na where you want to deliver and what is the environment of that uh, site that you must have to uh, see according to that you have to select suitable uh, delivery system whether it is nanoparticle microsphere liposomes nanogens that you must have to see especially what happened in case of the liposomes liposomes is consisted of you know with the phospholipids and that phospholipid is very sensitive and uh, it degrades so that is why uh, but no doubt nowadays there are uh, uh, techniques by which we can enhance the uh, life of the we can protect the these uh, lipids uh, which are used for uh, fabricating the liposomes so there are techniques by which we can enhance the uh, uh, this uh, life of the liposomes yeah, so you can use it depends on the uh, uh, environment where you want to deliver drug and the site of the environment where you want to deliver the drug so on that basis we will decide but we cannot say that uh, nanoparticle cell better liposome cell better or niosome cell better phytosome cell better that that is uh, depends on where you want to use these systems these are simple carrier which is carrying the drug to the uh, different organs of the body right so uh, here uh, scientist has to decide first when we select any uh, drug delivery system we must have to see where you want to deliver the drug right whether uh, what is the environment of that uh, site and uh, how the this, de uh, this delivery system uh, will travel Uh, from the site of uh, application or site of administration to the site of uh, uh, action, so that uh, environment that you must you must have to see that should be uh, safe and protective. Then only you can use it. 
so uh, we can't say that uh, liposomes are better than niosomes or niosomes are better than uh, liposomes that we cannot say okay is it clear thank you sir thank you why i am asking is there, is there any influence of environmental uh, factors while uh, delivering mm -hmm. the and uh, thank you for uh, radhika madam also for questioning uh, now i request uh, i invite uh, santosh kumar dr k santosh kumar to give th thanks words words of professor nk jengar sk jengar sorry <laughs> thank you so much madam and uh, i thank uh, today's speaker uh, professor sanjay k jain sir who is the former dean of uh, dr harishing gaur university and uh, he rightly focused on the natural and synthetic polymers based on colon targeting of the drugs and it is real uh, is a new aspect for the pharmacy research and uh, we are very fortunate uh, to have you sir to have your lecture sir for sharing your time and experience and also the expertise that you have in the subject you have rightly focused on the natural polymers uh, where you have uh, explained regarding the source uses then how it is derived and uh, how it is prepared in the laboratory then the mechanisms and also the stem photo micro microspheres uh, were also shown to us and the complete uh, knowledge regarding the natural polymers then how they are prepared etc was explained by you sir and uh, also touching the liposomes based uh, colon rectal cancer targeting and uh, i once again thank you sir for uh, sparing your time for us and sharing your experiences and knowledge with us sir. thank you so much thank you sir for your uh, valuable time and uh, valuable talk the uh, total colon targeting drug delivery thank you so much sir have a good day sir thank you thank you thank you thank you very much shelja for inviting me thank you very much thank you good afternoon just 5 minutes break for audience and all the faculty members please wait for 5 minutes Can I leave now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, sir. Much. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you.
Hello everyone. Moving towards the final lecture of the session by Dr. Lingam Garu. And and he will be introduced by Dr. B. Ragul Garu for his excellence. <clears throat> Over to you. Wow. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. I'm delighted and grateful to introduce our next distinguished and admirable speaker, Dr. Mekha Lingam to discuss about the current progress on natural polymers and their future trends in pharma. Dr. Lingam is previously associated with Dr. Reddy's Laboratories Limited Hyderabad, India and MSN Laboratories Private Limited Hyderabad, India and Apotex Research Private Limited, Bangalore, India with various levels. He pursued PhD from University College of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Kathia University, Warangal, India. Dr. Lingam has about 17 years of experience in formulation research and development. He handled our various dosage farms, mostly in mostly on oral solid dosage farms and parenteral dosage farms. He has supported in filling for major regulatory markets like United States, European Union, Canada, Australian Union, and rest of the world. We are very happy and you are here for us to speak and enlighten us with your knowledge, sir. Thank you. And we welcome you for your speech, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, giving uh, a brief introduction uh, on me. And uh, thank you, Shairaja. A very good evening to everyone. Is it audible? Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Yeah. So, very good evening to everyone. Sorry, please share your screen, sir. One second. Before sharing the my screen, just I wanted to. I know Professor K. B. Ramanamurthy, sir, as a professional. Uh, if you say when I am studying my B. Farm, M. Farm at the University College of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Kagate University, Professor K. B. Ramanamurthy, sir, used to come as an external examiner. So still I remember his face. He has good smiling on his face. Thank you, sir. And when Dr. Shailaja approached me to give a presentation on natural polymers, I agreed. I thought it's my pleasure to give a presentation on this occasion. But what to give? So generally academics, academics, if you see, everyone knows uh, novel drug delivery systems and a lot of research is going on natural polymers. Then I thought to give a presentation which is simple and some informative. Maybe it is useful, I thought. So then we will go through the presentation, I think so. Is it Shailaja, Doctor? Yes, sir. So I'll I'll share my screen. Doctor Shailaja? 
Yes. 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 I'll, I'll I'll share one. I'll. Yes, Doctor Lingam, you can go ahead. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. So, coming to our uh, today's topic, current progress on natural polymers and their future trend in pharma. Myself, Dr. Mekha Lingam, I am in PhD and presently I am Vice President of Population Development at Link Pharma Limited, Vishakapatnam. AP India and you can reach me at makealingam gmail.com and that is my mobile number 95384-5774 so coming to natural polymers so this presentation if you see overall it takes you through the brief discussion on some of the natural polymers and their usage in different conventional dosage forms. Example, if you excipient means it will be excipient or any active excipient sometimes may act as an active ingredient also. It plays a critical role in the creation of medicines, helping to serve the efficacy, safety and mostly the stability of active pharmaceutical ingredient and it should ensure that they deliver their promised benefits to the patient that is the foremost important criteria required for one of the excipient so optimal use of excipient can provide pharmaceutical manufacturers with cost saving, this is one of the most important criteria we need to consider during development of the product. In development, enhanced functionality, sometimes we need to enhance the functionality of active pharmaceutical ingredient. In that case also the excipient has to give its properties and help in drug formulation innovation. Excipients are the largest components of any pharmaceutical formulations they can be of natural or synthetic origin and synthetic coming to the natural polymers may be divided into different uh, the term synthetic semi synthetic are both broadly to distinguish their family of excipient from those extracted from the natural sources Semi-synthetic typically refers to the substances that is naturally derived but has been chemically modified. So these are general sources, natural only, but they are chemically or physically modified sometimes. Most excipient in this present whatever we are used are falls under this particular category, maybe semi-synthetic. There must be a natural to obtain the semi-synthetic excipients. In contrast, synthetic, everybody knows, is usually defined as a pure synthetic organic chemical which is synthesized. Coming to natural excipients, these are most of the natural excipients regularly used in oral solid doses forms or any solid doses forms. Acts as a binding agent. We can use as a lubricating agent, sometimes gelling agents, and suspending agent in suspensions, flavoring agents, maybe in uh, solid doses form or liquid doses forms, sweetening agents, those are also maybe liquid doses form or solid doses forms, bulking agent to increase the bulkiness of the tablet, disintegrant. Most of the time, solid oral doses forms require disintegrant. So, natural polymers can also act as a disintegrants. Coating agents to prevent the unpleasant taste of the, some of the tablets will apply the coating agents. So, coating agents 
uh, polymers can act as a coating agents at the other ends and the glide ends to increase the smooth flow of the blend and sometimes preservatives antioxidants and coloring agents most of the natural uh, polymers can be used as a coloring agents also and the solvents most of the natural solvent nothing but water is a solvent it's generally used in pharmaceutical industry buffering agents chelating agents and viscosity importing agents surface active agents and humectants these are the general uh, category you can say that uh, excipients are used coming to characteristics of ideal pharmaceutical excipients pharmaceutical excipients should have some certain characteristics and natural polymer substances have to fulfill these characteristics in order to be a successful candidate as pharmaceutical excipient generally we, need, we should remember whenever a formulation scientist should remember that he has to deliver the active pharmaceutical ingredient to the patient end user not the excipient keeping in mind he has to develop the formulation in such a way that the excipient quantity should be minimum when compared to the other means active suppose if you want to make a tablet with 100 mg of active pharmaceutical ingredient the minimum quantity of excipient should be used because means we should not give the excipient to the patient we should give the active ingredient to the patient if suppose 100 mg of active is there 120 mg of tablet weight we need to target that is our formulation scientist intention keeping in mind that should develop the product so there are some uh, these are the characteristics of ideal pharmaceutical excipient if you see pharmacologically it should be inert that is definitely any polymer should inert and pharmaceutically it should be active maybe it is binder or dyed weight or anything it should be non toxic and non irritant and no interaction with the drug or with other substances present in the formulation generally in pharmaceutical industry we will do the drug excipient compatibility studies to see the interaction between the drug and excipient and we will finalize the one excipient which is suitable for formulation of that particular dosage form and easy of handling it should be easy to handle means whenever a formulation scientist is doing the experimentation in lab or in production is taking the batch it should be easy to handle it should not irritate the skin or should not pose any unnecessary complicated indications and the pharmaceutical excipient should be feasible and most important is cost effective it should not be more cost when compared to the active pharmaceutical ingredient we should not give more cost because of this excipients to the formulation so keeping all this in mind we need to develop the product so coming to natural polymers although natural polymers have some superior advantages like these are less toxic biocompatible biodegradable and easily available some of the disadvantages but these particular disadvantages were there maybe few decades before but most of these disadvantages were not present nowadays because manufacturers are controlled all these particular disadvantages during the development of the excipient or during extraction of the excipient or after extracting the excipient they are purified in such a way that it should be used as a good excipient in the formulation development or in pharmaceutical industry suppose some of the disadvantage if you see microbial contamination may be occurred this is natural for all the excipients it's irrespective of the natural 
polymers it is for all the polymers microbial contamination may be there but it is controlled batch to batch variation is observed previously but nowadays the batch to batch variation in most of the times the pharmaceutical vendors or manufacturer are taking care they are giving specific uh, excipients with specific criteria with specific storage conditions and everything is taken care and rate of hydration is uncontrolled previously nowadays it is also controlled viscosity of the formulation reduced during storage sometimes it is right but some of the excipients polymer they are providing means vendors are providing with specific viscosity with specific storage conditions with specific life shelf life also they are providing and most of the natural polymers are <coughs> Nowadays used as excipients. So if you see the sources, everybody knows the natural polymers can be obtained from one of many sources. But if you see plants, microbes, animals, from all these sources, plants have the largest amount of polymeric substances as well as varieties also. Means. There are number of varieties. If you see one excipient, there are number of varieties of excipients. Grades are available to for taking the formulation scientist for uh, different grades excipients also available in the uh, market. Some polymeric substances are obtained from animal source, and very few are obtained from the microbes. Everybody knows. So if you see, there are. Key players in the natural farmer market. These are some example. If you go through the Google, Google it. You can get it. Ashland, Dupont, Corona International, CP Calco, the supplier is Signet, and BASF, JRS Pharma, and FMC Biopolymer. These are the top players. They are supplying natural polymers with specific grades and with specific properties. They are supplying. And if you see types of natural polymeric excipients, example polysaccharides of plant cell wall. Those are cellulose, hemicellulose, and pectins. Seaweed polysaccharides, alginates, carrageenan, gum agar, and microbial polysaccharides. You can say xanthan gum, jelen gum, and pulula. Animal polysaccharide. If you see. Chitin and chitosan, which is modified chitin, and exudates, acacia gum, tragacanth gum, mucilage gum. Previously, we used to study all these gums, but these are presently used in the formulation. We are using and marketed so many products are there in the market also. Starch, dextrin, and cyclodextrins. Coming to polysaccharides of plant cell wall. So generally, these particular polysaccharides of plant cell wall, natural polymeric excipients may be categorized into following classes: means cellulose, hemicellulose, and pectin. Coming to cellulose, if you ask any formulation scientist in the world, the cellulose are available in the lab. If you see any lab in the pharmaceutical industry, this is the most true. Frequently available excipient that is the micro crystalline cellulose. Cellulose obtained from fibrous materials such as wood and cotton can be mechanically disintegrated to produce powder cellulose, which has been used in the pharmaceutical industry as a diluent, means filler. In tablets, capsules, most of the dosage forms they will use these excipients. high quality powder cellulose when treated with hydrochloric acid produces micro crystalline cellulose this is also frequently used excipient means diluent in pharmaceutical industry which is preferred over powder cellulose because it is more free flowing containing non fibrous material it is consequently employed as diluent or filler sometimes binder also in tablets and capsules or both 
wet granulation and a dry granulation process. If you see powder cellular properties, this is a general excipient. This is a natural source. People are using and people are patients are taking. We need not go any drug delivery system. Simple excipient powder cellulose is a plant-based functional filler, physiologically inert. It is chemically inert and is thus not metabolized by human body because it is not digested. It has no functional calorie value and high plastic deformation. Low residual moisture content and high compressibility. This is one thing which is helpful for making the tablet. It is having high compressibility. Accelerated disintegration means it disintegrates easily tablets. Binding properties and fibrous structure leading to stable tablets with low friability. Pesticide free and herbicide free. It is having so many advantages. If you see powder cellulose, there are so many suppliers in the market for powder cellulose, which is frequently used as a diluent in any dosage forms, means tablets, capsules, modular release, or immediate release dosage forms. Various grades of arbocells, means powder cellulose, are available in the market. If you see, this is the natural source. So previously, decades before it is there, people are not used, but presently people are using because so many grades are available in the market. Arbozel, if you see, grade M80, P290 and A300 is available with a different particle size. Average particle size for 55, D90 is 75 and 320 and with various bulk densities and main applications for diluent is Arbozel has been used and it is has been used also and presently it is using in the pharmaceutical industry coming to powder cellulose where it has been used one example just i quoted here this is aldomet methyl dopa formulation which is available in the market it's branded product there has been used powder cellulose as diluent in this particular formulation. It is used for treatment of hypertension. It is the film coated tablet. And if you see the coating composition also having the carnobobax, it is also natural excipient. Don't think that natural excipients are not used to previously. It is old product. And powder cellulose and guargum and carnauba wax has been used in this particular formulation. There are a number of examples, just I quoted one example over here. If you open the excipient, handbook of excipient for microcrystalline cellulose or powder cellulose, anything, you can find number of grades. Avicel with a different grade means Avicel 101. 102, I will sell pH 103, 105, pH 112, pH 113, and I will sell pH 200, I will sell pH 301 and 302. With a different particle size, it is available with moisture content. Whenever the formulation means any formulation is sensitive to the moisture or any formulation it is not having good flow properties for the blend you can choose the number of the avicel grades which are available in the market with the different properties of the avicel grades and if you see cell one of the other vendors cell takes ciolas and hemocyl and if you see mcc sanaq so many grades are available with the fmc international specialty products and other Cashy corporations. Hemicellulose. Whatever we are discussing is microcrystalline cellulose and order cellulose. Now coming to hemicellulose. Hemicellulose also used as an excipient that is pancreatin by tablet. If you see live diet, that is the brand name. The hemicellulose is the diluent for this particular product. 
coming to pectins pectins are non starch linear polysaccharides extracted from the plant cell wall they are predominantly linear polymer of mainly 1 to 4 linked d galactulonic acid residues interrupted by 1 to linked l ramos residues with a few hundred to about 1000 building blocks per molecule most of the times why we will select this pectin is soluble in water it is soluble in water pectin is not able to shield its drug load effectively during its passage through the stomach and small intestine so these are the some of the properties for the pectin coming to pectin where it has been used previously there are n number of articles if you see for pectin you will find in google but it is used as an active also uses as an active if you open pulse brazil sugar free pulberry this is the picture whatever uh, you are saying the pectin is 7 mg and it is used as a demulcent apart from the inactive ingredient the polymer it is also used as a demulcent these are the available marketed samples if you google it you can find it out and pectin also used as a demulcent in one of the formulation which is used for temporary relief of minor discomfort and protection of irritated areas in sore mouth throats this is the brand name which is available in the market that is throat relief pops in that pectin 12 mg is used as an active ingredient it's not an in this particular formulation it is used as active not an excipient those are cell wall related polymers and coming to seaweed polysaccharides seaweeds are mainly macroscopic multicellular marine algae seaweed polysaccharide mainly include carrageenan agar and alginates alginates are the natural polysaccharide polymers isolated from brown sea weeds and alginic acid can be converted into its salt of which sodium alginate is the major excipient which is presently used for many formulations if you see sodium alginate has been used in this particular formulation that is viratil sr tablets means sustain release tablets to 120 mg and 240 mg in that sodium alginate has been used as controlling polymer along with that microcrystalline cellulose also is there as a bulking agent this is used to treat the moderate hypertension coming to alginic acid which is used as excipient this is the if you see scalaxin metaxalone tablet 800 mg which is marketed in us world throughout the world it is more critical product in this particular dosage from the innovators used alginic acid and ammonium calcium alginate and constant if you see the excipient three of the excipients are natural source and this is a very big molecule for king pharmaceutical research e this is approved in 2002 this particular product tablet it is approved in 2002 at that time he has used alginic acid and constant natural excipient in this particular formulation it's a good brand and alginic acid has been used in some of the formulation like gavison like antacid formulations you see antacid formulation so many number of antacid formulations are available temporarily which will relieve the symptoms of heartburn acid ingestion due to acid reflux in this particular formulation alginic acid and corn starch has been used as a polymers of choice coming to carrageenan this is another name is contrast crystals and it is used as a gelling agent a good substitute for gelatin gelatin is the animal based product 
so it is good substitute for gelatin hard and soft gelatin capsules it is used as a thickening agent in hand lotions and shampoos ferragnan has unique properties like viscosity continuous phase gel formation and specific interactions with abrasion combination of these properties help in stabilizing the preparations chala ja is it okay hello yeah lenum it is good why yeah. because i am telling uh, suppose uh, if it is not audible to the audience so maybe it is uh, yeah and you that's the reason just i am interrupting okay we'll go through it so if you see keragina keraginan is also used as one of the natural polymer excipient in formulations like qtf in fumarate sustain release tablet if you see the ingredients are microcrystalline cellulose is there keragina also is there and if you see film coating keragina also used as a polymer of choice for film coating in cutafin fumarate sustain release tablets means it has been used in core tablet to control the release of the drug at the same time in film coating also it has been used as one of the polymer excipient coming to sodium alginate as a active substance it acts as a polymer excipient and at the same time it has been using as a active substance means if you see gavison advanced any cell flavor hollow suspension sodium alginate is one of the active substance gavison so many formulations were there gavison advanced peppermint with the different flavors it is available in that sodium alginate is one of the active substance they have been used and marketing in the market sodium alginate gavison advanced peppermint flavor oral suspension if you google it you can find it gavison is the brand name it is not a generic name brand name and it is used sodium alginate 1000 mg and potassium hydrogen carbonate 200 mg so this is used to Uh, in the treatment of reflux of acids and other excipients were also there in the formulation in one of the other formulation like sodium alginate has been used as a controlling polymer in securon sr 240 mg tablets that is nothing but pirapamil hydrochloride sustain release tablets has been used Uh, coming to sodium alginate uh, it's general means this particular polymer is manufactured by the fmc biopolymer and they are supplying different grades if you see the table application anti reflux control release enteric coating biomedical and uh, like their product they are given brand name also protonol some of the brand names with a different type of sodium alginate alginic acid and grade what is the grade and its viscosity nowadays separate material separate viscosity previous it is not there so presently they are giving the different viscosities different brand names and different description and their application also this is different applications for different grades you can use in number of products coming to microbial polysaccharides so these type of polymers are obtained by the fermentation of carbohydrate products mainly this fermentation is performed by specific bacteria or fungus example if you know these are ganthan gum gelan gum and pollulan are in this category coming to ganthan gum this is the one of the marketed product which is having xanthan gum as the polymer that is 6 plus para paid 250 mg per 5 ml oral suspension xanthan gum has been used as a suspending agent in this particular formulation so it is used to moderate pain and antipyretic xanthan gum this is the 
well known brand everybody uses that is augmentin o amoxicillin it has been used in this particular formulation gamtangam has been used as a suspending agent it's a very good brand actually if you see in the market this is marketed by gsk lapso smith klein uk augment in suspension o amoxicillin it is called this those are the formulation related to pharmaceutical industry and if you come to daily uses like sensodyne fresh gel also they are using the xanthangum along with other excipients it is there xanthangum it is used in eye gels also ophthalmic gels that is lubristil eye gels if you see there xanthan gum 1% is there in the formulation along with sodium hyaluronate this composition is hyaluronic acid and xanthan gum the distributor is polypharma this is also branded drug internationally available brand lubristil gel xanthan gum also used in one of the formulation like oral suspension for ibuprofen calprofen if we see the list of excipients glycerol and xanthan gum is there strawberry flavor that is also natural uh, flavor it is there it is used to moderate pain and post immunization pyrexia this is marketed by mc nail products limited the active ingredient is ibuprofen and one of the other excipient like the gel and gum these are the some of the example just i am putting over here uh, to see that natural polymers are used in conventional doses forms also thymoptol la 0.25% and 0.5% gel forming eye drop solution contains gel and gum as a solution gel and gum is used it is santin uk limited and the active is thymolol maleate gum arabic this is also piglox 10 g powder for oral solution in sachet in this particular formulation it is their gum arabic is there and later flavors also is there this particular formulation is used a symptomatic treatment of constipation in adults and children this is a oral solution powder for oral solution in that gum arabic is there coming to one of the other natural polymer that is uh, pollulan capsules these particular pollulan capsules are type of vegetable capsule made from pollulan it is a natural source Pollulan is the biopolymer material. It is a polish of a red produced by fermentation of carbohydrate like starch and sugar by the fungus Aerobasidium pollulan. Its polish acrides are water soluble by nature, so fermentation which makes it is a pollulan. These are 100% natural vegetable capsules which are edible polymer, odorless. and have no identifiable taste and for those who hesitate to take the gelatin gelatin is the animal source so recently most of the patients are not taking the gelatin capsule so after that hpmc capsule has come nowadays pollulan capsules are so coming into the picture in the market these are the substitute for uh, gelatin capsules and hpmc capsules if you see there are number of pollulan capsules are available in the market with the different colors just i have quoted over here uh, transparent colored uh, capsules the advantages of pollulan capsules excellent oxidation barrier properties 250 times better than the hpmc capsule and 90 times better than the gelatin capsules that is the advantage for pollulan capsules and they have good stability resulting in extended shelf life these pollulan capsules are chemically inert 
no cross linking takes place this cross linking is a major problem for the capsule so we can prevent the cross linking for the capsules especially should be able to protect the sensitive nutraceuticals like plant extracts antioxidants pharmaceutical active ingredients and assures superior protection of encapsulated substances and the prolonged shelf life that is the required for pharmaceutical industry prolonged shelf life of the capsule that is required for the industry green and healthy products no toxic chemicals involved in growing harvesting or even extract in the pollula hence it is completely natural and environmental friendly and enhance transparency as compared to the gelatin or hpmc capsules coming to animal polysaccharides so most of the people know that animal polysaccharides are chitin and chitosan are animal polysaccharides and if you see one of these are the chitosan is a biocompatible biodegradable bioadhesive cationic polyamine it also enhances the transport of polar drugs across epithelial surfaces and it's a viscosity imparting agents generally used in the formulations example if you see protosan uh, the protosan is manufactured by dupont that is nothing but chitosan there are number of brands are available chitosan nowadays chitosan protosan 113 means type chitosan chloride chitosan glutamate and degree of acetylation with a different degree of acetylation they are divided into different grades and they are having apparent viscosity different viscosities are having different grades and this is the application biomedical applications such as wound healing tissue regenerating tissue repairs local delivery of cells and drugs proteins genes and other therapeutics also used for nasal mucoadhesive drug delivery system these are the some of the brands which is manufactured by the dupont and they are supplying into the market also one of the simple example if you go through it the soap that is uh, the skin protectant this is the brand name umax beauty chitosan molecular weight of 200 to 800 has been used as an active ingredient in this particular uh, uh, soap used as a skin protectant for external use only just for uh, sake of uh, information i quoted this example coming to exudates and gums gums and mucilages are natural plant hydrocolloids which can be further classified into anionic or non ionic polysaccharides they may be salt of polysaccharide also they are translucent amorphous substances usually produced by plants as a protective after injury Exuded gums are viscous sticky fluids which is obtained after cutting the plant. They are actually seal of infected section of plant and help to produce reduce the loss of moisture because of physical injury or by the attack of fungi. <coughs> gums have found pharmaceutical application since 1800. And having like acacia gum, ragakanth gum, locust gum are example in this particular category. Just I am quoting where acacia has been used as an excipient. If you see Pradaksa is a well brand, international brand product. Still people are using Dabigatran is the active substance and it is used in the treatment of deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism if you see the capsule content this is the well protected and is patented also this particular formula and the process is patented still the patent is valid 2031 patent in some of the countries 2031 these particular patents are going to expire he has used the capsule content acacia tartaric acid hypromellose Acacia is a 
natural polymer and if you see capsule cell capsule cell carrageenan has been used in this particular formulation it will give good shelf life to the product and the disintegration of the capsule also depends on the carrageenan content this is the very critical product in the pharmaceutical industry people are struggle to develop this particular products uh, capsules and if you see printing ink also say contains cellulac these are the three natural polymers which are having in products are capsules those are available as 75 mg 110 mg and 150 mg hard gel means these are the capsules <coughs> prepared by cellulac and carrageenan Coming to starches, starches are polymeric carbohydrates and which have a large glucose units joined by glucosidic bonds. Starch, whether in the native or modified form, has been used as one of the key pharmaceutical excipients in pharmaceutical tablets and capsule formulation. Starch means it is, if it is modified, that is. Pre-gelatinized starch or partially pre-gelatinized starch has been used as a diluent or disintegrant binder in so many formulations. It serves various functions such as bulking agent, binder, or disintegrant, adding in drug delivery. You see, Flagyl 400 mg tablets. It contains May starch as a binder. It may be used the innovator, maybe binder or disintegrant, but it contains starch. May starch as one of the natural polymer in this particular formulation. Starches, Tamiflu. If you see the Tamiflu is available as a capsule and oral suspension. Two formulations were available. Tamiflu 30 mg, 45 mg, and 75 mg capsule, and oral suspension is also available. In the capsule formulation, he has used pre gelatinized starch, which is derived from the mesh starch as one of the excipients. This may be disintegrant, he has used. And if you see in suspension, Tamiflu suspension, xanthan gum has been used as a suspending agent in this particular formulation. This is also one of the, just one, giving one example for uh, starches. If you see number of products were there with pre gelatinized starch, it is acts as a diluent, binder, disintegrant, so many applications are there. This is the label. Tamiflu capsules, 30 mg, 75 mg, and 45 mg. One of the examples for starches is anadine ibuprofen tablets, 200 mg tablets. This is approved in 2011 and the marketing also. It's used to relieve mild to moderate pain. The tablet contains may starch, pre-gelatinized starch, and the tablet coating contains carnauba-wax, and printing ink contains shellac. Three, four coating and printing also, their natural polymers are there in this particular formulation. Coming to cyclodextins. So everybody knows cyclodextins are used to improve the solubility and all those things in the pharma industry. These are cyclic oligosaccharides in which six to eight glucose units are linked by beta one four glucosidic bonds. Cyclodextins have molecules with internal hydrophobic cavities and external hydrophilic cavities. So internal hydrophobic cavities in cyclodextins can help several guest molecules by non-covalent interactions. Cyclodextins and their derivatives are widely investigated for oral administration of peptides and proteins so many articles are available with respect to the cyclodextins you know it can also increase the absorption of insulin among the biological barriers but if you see cyclodextin uh, further pharmaceutical applications of productions are limited by cyclotoxicity and low water solubility of unmodified cyclodextins if cyclodextins are modified it is having good properties un 
modified sacral extensions are having low water solubility when compared to the modified sacral extensions. Pure sacral extension, maybe it is unmodified or unmodified has been used. If you see V pen, this is the voriconazole is available in three formulations in the market. That is brand name of V pen. 50 mg and 200 mg film coated tablets. We fend 200 mg powder for solution for infusion means for injection. And we fend 40 mg per ml for oral suspension means three routes of administration. We fend has Inovet has used in the tablet pre-gelatinized starch he has used in the injection he has used sulfobutyl ether beta cyclodextrin. And in suspension, he has used Jantan gum. This is one good example. If you see natural polymers are there in the market, in the brands, they are invented so much of research they have done on the natural polymers, and they are incorporated these particular polymers into their formulation, and they are giving good result in the market also. This is also one of the Good example is Poranax. Poranax, if you see, itraconazole is the injection, means uh, infusion, it contains hydroxypropyl beta cyclodextrin in their formulation. Coming to dextrons, dextrons also natural polymers, these are polysaccharides. Dextron is a complex branched polysaccharide made of many glucose molecules joined into chains of varying lengths. Everybody knows. It consists of alpha D16 glucose linked polyglucan with side chains linked to the backbone of polymer and which is available in the market with a different molecular weight ranges from 1000 to 2 lakhs. These dextrons are used in the replacement of blood loss, thrombosis, prophylaxis and improvement of real gene. This is one example I quoted over here is is natural preservative free sterile ophthalmic solution contains 1 mg of dextron 70. Dextran, these are polymer, polysaccharides are synthesized by number of bacterial species. The synthesis occurs extracellularly and are catalyzed by species of enzyme dextran sucrase. Dextran is produced at the industrial, industrial level by fermentation of sucrose and rich media. Yield of the product depends on various factors like temperature, pH and nitrogen source. Dextron is commercially available and is used as drugs means active also, especially as blood plasma volume expander. It has found industrial application in food, pharma, chemical industries as adjuvant, emulsifier, carrier and stabilizer. This is one of the example dextran where it has been used. Cosmofer, if you google it, you can find it out. Cosmofer contains iron dextran. There's a number of uh, doses from this 2 ml, 5 ml, and 10 ml amples are available with a different dextran content. This is used for adult only, indicated for treatment of iron deficiency in various conditions. Iron dextran injection, which is marketed by Cosmofer. And one more example for dextran TS Natural A. This is lubricant eye drops, ipromillose ophthalmic solution USP. In that, also dextran 70, so it is 70 percent is available. Coming to some of the oils, natural oils. So everybody knows soya bean oil is a vegetable oil which is extracted from seeds of soya bean 
and it is one of the most widely consumed cooking oil and second most consumed vegetable oil so if you see this brand name deep prevent 10 mg per ml this is a one of the emulsion for injection or infusion which contains propofol 10 mg per ml marketed by as pen pharmaceutical form is emulsion therapeutically it is short acting intravenous general anesthetic it is used and it contains soya bean oil that is vegetable oil coming to one of the new era recently fda also approved that is chewed dam ultra xc which is made from hyaluronic acid this is manufactured by alert gum for lip augmentation and that lasts for around one year it may remains this hyaluronic acid is a substance that occurs naturally in the skin eyes joints its primary function is to trap water inside tissue cells keeping the eyes moist and joints lubricated hyaluronic acid also has many medical and commercial uses it is available in variety of forms including dietary supplements face creams serum eye drops injections hyaluronic acid is exhibiting a surge in popularity and not only a dermal filler but also a moisturizer in topical formulations this hyaluronic acid is a natural polymer is used in number of formulations nowadays coming to packaging so we have seen capsule tablets some of them are shown injections and suspensions we have seen where these natural polymers are used packing material also used natural polymers there are number of packing materials are available but i quoted one of the example packaging can be defined as an economical means of providing presentation the final presentation protection of the product maybe capsule or tablet identification information containment convenient and compliance of the product during storage that is important criteria and carriage display and until the product is consumed until the product means from the product manufacturer to the consumer means patient it should protect the packaging should protect the pharmaceutical ingredient or formulation packaging must provide protection against climatic conditions biological physical chemical hazards and must be economical the packaging material should be economical we need to consider costing is the most important criteria in pharmaceutical industry the package must ensure adequate stability of product throughout the shelf life that is the foremost important criteria packaging material should give adequate protection to the pharmaceutical dosage form a simple example i have quoted over here is cotton cotton is the natural fiber which is treated and purified to be used in pharmaceutical doses form during packing these are used to occupy the void spaces present in the container means bottle bottle some of the tablets were there and void space will be there to avoid the chipping of the tablets means to avoid chipping of the tablets and formulation of dents in hard gelatin capsule the cotton was inserted into the Uh, bottle cotton is biodegradable has no issues for waste handling cotton coil available in various thicknesses 6 g per yard 9 g per yard 12 g per yard 20 g per yard there are number of base uh, on the requirement of the pharmaceutical industry cotton coils are available in the form of spools which enable easy automation and speed in securing packing for easy handling of the cotton they are available in different packs cotton coils features is the natural fiber cuts easily creates dry environment in the bottle that is the foremost criteria important criteria regulator approved all the regulators are approved this particular cottons 
most commonly used in bottles or capsule and tablets and the most it is biodegradable so we has of now we have seen number of these are the some of the example where natural polymers has been used and marketed in the formulations and there is a requirement for there are number if you see there are number of uh, journals are available on natural polymers for drug delivery so many delivery is not for delivery systems by using natural polymers but just i am giving simple examples where natural polymers has been used and consumed and using by the industry finally just i wanted to say that polymers play a vital role in the drug delivery system so the selection of polymer plays an important role in the manufacturing of drugs natural biodegradable polymers have received much more attention in the last few decades due to their application in the field related to environmental protection that is for most important criteria we need to remember and the maintenance of physical health natural polymers can be good substitute for synthetic polymers and many of the side effects of the synthetic polymers can be overcome by the using natural polymers future scope may be in academics i can say that academic people has to do so much of research on natural polymers and their usage in simple tablet capsule do the novel research i don't mind means industry needs the novel research but at the same time do simple research and do the patent the patent it so many number of patents are available on natural polymers the polymers have great future because of its increased demand and usage researchers are being carried out to use polymers effectively if you go through recent covid 19 effect this is the impact covid 19 impact on 2021 and 2026 global and regional national polymer industry production its sales and consumption status and prospects professional market research report standard version this is the if you buy you will get it uh, i am not able to buy this particular uh, information so that is the reason i am giving information to the people who wanted to know the scenario of natural polymers or covid impact on the natural polymer source and sales and the one of the other market key insights and covid 19 impact and analysis if you go through this particular site you will get global natural polymer market information by type like cellulose ether starch fermentation products exudates vegetable gums application in pharmaceutical oil field food and beverages cosmetics packaging textile and regional global forecast till 2023 so covid impact is also there on the natural polymer source supply and everything we need to keep in mind so these are the general uh, as such all this information as such over here if you go through the daily mail you will get it all the brand names or uh, if you go through fda site you will get it our medicine uk you will get it our europe that is emia europea or uh, generally if you google it you can get it anything but specifically you won't get this particular information if you know then only you will get suppose products are, if you know the products are, you will get it uh, if you google it products are composition if you don't know the products are, then you don't know. so overall there in the pharmaceutical industry they knows they are implementing the natural polymers they are using finally i want to thank you for giving me an opportunity to give a presentation simple presentation on natural polymers yes sir 
professor kb ramnamurthy gar i wish you a happy super animation life is all about going on i am happy that you are entering into a new life a life full of free time and lots of fun with nature that's what actually you are selected good topic that is nature so you enjoy with nature may god bless you and your days be filled with filled with joy and ecstasy thank you everyone thank you so thank you dr lingam for your nice words i i really enjoyed your uh, presentation to a great extent sir I your face is very smiling sir i remember forever when you used to come as <laughs> thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you good smile good up and enjoy your life thank you thank you very much so if any questions are there you can reach me at mekalingam@gmail.com or my phone number i mentioned over there that is 9538453074 if anything is there any errors are there excuse me sir why because we are it is really extraordinary lecture i had for the last in the recent times especially your commercial applications are really thrilling you have given so many commercial that? applications of natural gums which are really interesting and uh, educating to the present day generation yes sir why because i wanted to show to the any budding scientist they has to think to the patient what we need to give to the patient we need to do the research on now our drug delivery system is the same time we should not forget the tablet capsule and simple conventional yeah. dose form also exactly. there we can use all this natural formulas in this particular dose forms yes thank you thank you sir thank you for giving me an opportunity thank you, thank you very much and have a nice day thank you thank you for giving us also chela ja anything is there dr shela ja Dr. Lingam, thank you. Now I invite uh, Santosh Kumar to speak a few words related to our talk. Give a thank note. Thank you, madam. And uh, I thank uh, Dr. Meka Lingam sir, who is the vice president for Leaf Pharma Limited, Vizag, and uh, he rightly focused on the current progress of uh, natural polymers. and also the future trends in the pharma industry and we have uh, we had a short industrial tour uh, during his lecture where he has uh, rightly focused on the natural polymers and uh, the animal sources and the plant sources of those uh, natural polymers and also uh, the he quoted uh, good examples uh, where we can find the natural polymers as one of the ingredients uh, in uh, different uh, formulations like uh, methyl dopa or uh, caragene which is a choice of polymer in the film coated tablets and uh, sodium alginate uh, which is in the gaviscon uh, oral for suspension and also the well known augmentin which is a uh, amoxiclav or coam where xanthan gum is a uh, suspending agent in suspensions and also regarding the pullanan ca capsules where uh, uh, 100% natural vegetable capsules and they are also uh, bio 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 for polymers where the transparent capsules were uh, manufactured and they are a good replacement for the synthetic polymers and uh, sir also uh, uh, gave the information regarding uh, the gums and mucilages then different starches which are used as for example like tamiflu where uh, it's used for uh, swine flu or influenza and uh, nasal tamivir tablets and uh, the cyclodextrins then also uh, regarding the new products like uh, hyaluronic acid which is used in the uh, what uh, the make, uh, lips lips lipstick or uh, other makeup uh, cosmetics and also the packaging materials where uh, cotton is one of the uh, packaging materials that is used while manufacturing the uh, products and uh, thank you so much sir for focusing on these topics and it's very informative session and it's also very good interactive session sir and uh, thank, thank you. you for your time expertise and also uh, for making the session a great success thank you thank you, thank you everyone thank you, thank you. Thank you. dr lingam for sharing your valuable time with our session and uh, your good talk thank you one and thank you sir
Now I invite our beloved Professor G. Dr. Karu to present related to our webinar and uh, concluding the session. Okay. Thank you, Sailaja. I am Professor uh, Grija Shankar, AU College of Pharmaceutical Sciences. On behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to make uh, concluding remarks at the end of this uh, webinar. It is always uh, nice to end good evenings on a bright note. It is also a privilege and honor to be interested with uh, such an undertaking at a virtual gathering of eminent people from different parts of the world. By listening to excellent presentations and discussions, I'm sure we have gained and imbibed a deeper understanding of new approaches in the utilization of natural excipients in various drug delivery systems. Thank you speakers for giving good lectures and delivering valuable knowledge to pharma fraternity through this international webinar. And it has been great pleasure to participate in this event also. So I can conclude that the theme of the webinar has been accomplished and wishing the future prosperity of all the participants. I would like to take this moment to thank all our speakers. I must mention our deep sense of appreciation of, to Professor Sri Kumaran Melithil for delivering an excellent lecture on drug delivery and intellectual property. How to patent your research. It is a very informative topic with live case studies. Thank you very much, sir. Further, we are grateful to Professor Chandrasekhar Kolli for demonstrating on maltose micro needles for transdermal delivery of drugs. Thank you very much, sir. It is a quite novel and very interesting also. I may like to express our sincere thanks to Professor S.K. Jain, who has given natural and synthetic polymers based on based on so thank you very much sir and finally we would also like to acknowledge our gratitude to dr meka lingam in making us to learn current progress on natural polymers and their future trend in pharma by covering a very illuminative examples with all the formulations that is. So we are all inspired by your uh, great words, sir. And thank you very much for your attention and giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now I invite Dr. A. Krishnamanjari Pawar to propose vote of thanks. Good evening to all the dignitaries. I deem it a great honor and privilege to propose the vote of thanks on this memorable occasion, international webinar on current and future perspectives of natural pharmaceutical excipients and their applications in drug delivery systems on the eve of superannuation function of Professor K. V. Ramnamurti. Let me first of all start by giving glory to the Almighty God for making today's international webinar a resounding success. First and foremost, I thank our president of today's webinar, Professor Y. Rajendra Prasad, sir, for his great contribution in conducting the webinar and gearing up all the young faculty members on one platform. I thank our chief patron, Professor TVGD Prasad Reddy, sir, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Andhra University, who, despite his busy schedule, has found time to grace this occasion and inspiring all the young faculties, students, and scholars. I also express my heartfelt thanks to Professor K. Samatha, Rector, Andhra University, for her support in conducting the webinar. We are grateful to Professor B. Gangarao, sir, Registrar Adhikavi Nannaya University, Raja Mahendravaram, for his presence and encouragement. My heartfelt thanks to all the eminent speakers, Professor Sri Kumaran Melithil, 
registered patent attorney professor emeritus university of missouri professor chandrashekar kolli professor of pharmaceutics college of pharmacy california health sciences university usa professor sanjay k jain professor and head department of pharmaceutical sciences dr harsing gaur university madhya pradesh dr meka lingam vice president formulation development lee pharma limited visakhapatnam for their prodigious talks the lectures given by uh, by the outstanding speakers are very valuable edifying and informative which helps us to boost our knowledge in their topics i specially thank professor C. sri kumaran garu and professor chandrashekar kolli garu for their efforts in delivering the talks even it, it is an unusual time for them i owe my special gratitude to all the inspiring faculty members for their valuable contribution especially i congratulate dr p shailaja organizing secretary for her excellent efforts in conducting the international webinar in this pandemic i thank all the non teaching staff who have worked hard to ensure that this occasion becomes a memorable success i thank the distinguished invitees and all the registered participants for their for accepting our invitation i thank i express my special thanks to professor k rama sudagaru director of au computer center and her team members surendra and vamshi for their patience and wonderful support for organizing the webinar and other virtual sessions for conducting in the university also i thank the members of the print and electronic media for evincing interest in covering the event and all good hearts who worked behind the screen last but not least i thank you my friends for your cooperation in making this webinar an enormous success once again i thank each and everyone thank you so much for your attention thank you all thank you dr sir a small note to all the registered candidates here we we are sending feedback uh, forms to your uh, registered mails and some some mail ids are not correctly given to us please send us uh, again and uh, we are going to give the feedback forms and the 60% correct answers will be uh, taken into consideration for providing e certificates and the time limit is uh, for 24 hours we are going to allow the uh, submission of the feedback forms thank you thank you one and all